Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We will begin our Board of License Commissioners meeting this morning, as we have for many time, many years, with the pledge to the flag and observe a moment of silence in memory of all those who have passed before and dedicated their lives to this great country. It's strictly voluntary. With that. Mr. Barnhart, if you would, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> this time I would ask our attorney, Mr. Dixon, if we call, if he will call our first case, number 6410, please. All right, case 6410, a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license issued to Gennaro Iliano for the use of Two Eagle LLC trading as Twin Arc Tavern, um, 1001 Twin Arc Road, Suite 20, Mount Airy, Maryland, 21771, violation hearing sale to a minor. In the file of this matter, we have the following documents. Notice of intent to defend with the box checked, I intend to contest the alleged violation. Uh, dated August 1st, 2022, signature by Gennaro Iliano. There's a December 23rd, 2021 letter from Joe Vance to Gennaro Iliano. Then there's an alcohol compliance violation sheet Completed and signed by uh, Jim Pullen. There is a notice of violation for selling alcohol to persons under 21 under the letterhead of uh, Brian L. D. Leonardo, state's attorney, and it is signed by a Stephanie Phillip. I would ask that the file be entered into evidence. Thank you. <clears throat> we'll accept that into evidence. This time I would ask all those who intend to testify in this case, please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in by Ms. Vance. Do you swear or affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. You may be seated. Inspectors, would you like to proceed? Oh, before we do, I would ask that those who testify, before you testify, please state your name and your address for the record, please, and spell your last name. With that, Inspector Jim. Good morning. Uh, Inspector Jim Pullen, P-U-L-L-E-N, uh, Inspector for the Board of License Commissioners of Carroll County, 225 North Center Street, Westminster, Maryland. The case is on the Wednesday, the 27th of July, 2022, at approximately 3.05 p.m., I sent uh, two underage volunteers into the Twin Arch Tavern, which is located at 1001 Twin Arch Road, Suite 20, Mount Airy, Maryland, Carroll County, Maryland, in th with the intent for them to purchase alcoholic beverages. The volunteers sat at the bar, and the volunteers ordered a Bud Light beer and a Michelob beer, respectively, from the server who was identified as a Stephanie Webster Phillip. The server did not ask to see ID from either volunteer. Upon my 
sorry, upon my arrival, I spoke with Stephanie Phillip, and she told me that she knew it was a criminal offense to serve a minor, an alcoholic beverage, and she stated that she thought they were both over 21 years of age. She told me she was TIPS or TAMS certified. Uh, I then spoke to the acting manager and Michael Miller about the incident, and that would be the case. Uh, here's the photographs I wish to submit. Yes, sir. And I make a motion to uh, submit four photographs for the record. We'll accept them into the record. Both volunteers were under the age of uh, 21, one being 16 years of age and one being 17 years of age, and uh, that would be the case. Thank you. With that being the case, who is going to speak on behalf of the licensee? I will speak. I'm um, Gennaro Iliano, I-L-L-I-A-N-O, 6102 Shaladon Circle, Mount Airy, Maryland. <coughs> the first thing is um, we, they put, um, we put we wish to contest, but we, we do not intend to contest this violation. And then the the bartender Stephanie that was working that day she was tip certified she definitely should have known better she she should have known the bar to card everybody that especially they looked this young and then the the problem with her is that she never took any responsibility for this she blamed the restaurant she blamed she blamed the liquor board she she blamed everybody else so we fired her later that day because of that and it's just a stupid mistake she should have never made, and she definitely should have known better. And we also have our general manager, Amber Moore, with us today. So did you say you're not contesting it? No. So what was your uh, what is your typical training in-house training when you hire someone new? How long first of all, how long did she work for you? She worked um, do you want to say it? Yeah. Uh, Amber Moore, M O O R E 5025 Canvas Back Court, Frederick, Maryland 21703. Um, as Janara stated, I am the general manager. Um, I have been there since we have opened, which was November 30th, 2020. Um, I've been with the establishment in general, previous ownership as well, since uh, October of 2015. Um, Ms. Phillips has worked for the tavern uh, approximately five years um, in total, previous ownership and under the new ownership. Um, she is TIPS and TAM certified. All staff is required to be a TIPS and TAM certified. Anybody who serves any alcoholic beverages is required to do so. Um, we also have regular meetings in regards to uh, the appropriate procedures for carding and identifying fake IDs, intoxication, um, procedures on when to um, deny service and how to go about doing so. Um, you know, as well as just regularly enforcing that, you know, they are liable as is the restaurant should anything happen. So do you have any handbook, employee handbook that states your policies on um, alcohol? We do have a handbook and did then we- bring it with you? I did not bring it with me. I, sorry, I did not know that I would need it. Um, but we do also keep the identification book uh, on hand behind the bar as well for uh, being able to check multiple state IDs for the authentication of it. Um, and we keep records of everybody's TIP certification as to when they're expired and when they need to be renewed. So do you have a card all policy? We don't have a card all policy. Um, we do now. We did not before. Um, we do card anybody who appears to be under the age of 50 is the general rule. Um, we've 
in the seven years that I've been there, we have never had an infraction uh, against anybody there. We do have returning staff from previous, so um, you know it's generally good practice that everybody does card. Um, you know, we have had multiple instances even after Mrs. Phillips infraction where we have denied service to guests for not having IDs even though they are clearly probably over 21, um, as well as uh, denying service for some, uh, an underage kid who we believe to have a false identification um, and came in with some other gentleman who was of age but we also denied service to them too. So it is, it is standard practice for us not to uh, you know, serve anybody underage or anybody without an ID in general or an expired identification. So was Ms. Phillips the only one working at the bar that day? She was. Was there a manager there? Uh, yes, Michael Miller. Mr. Benford, was are there any previous violations? Um, not for Twin Arch Tavern, no. There was one, but not for that particular restaurant yeah. at, with that name. Right? Un Correct. Yeah, under the prior ownership, there was one in, in July, yes. January of 2021. That does sound familiar. If, if, if it's on the chart, that is correct on the what's on the chart. Okay. So, Mr. Bemperham, uh, was this the first time they were checked under this name? Correct, yes. The first time? Yes. Were they rechecked? I've not been able to do that because uh, my two volunteers have been involved in high school sports, so, okay. but that will be taken care of shortly. And were they cooperative? Mr. Miller, the, uh, the acting manager who's the chef at the establishment, he was very concerned about what went on. Uh, Miss Phillip, the uh, uh, bartender, she had a very strange attitude. She was, she didn't really care. She was, then she became sort of threatening and not taking any responsibility. It was my fault, it was your fault, it was everybody else's but hers. So Ms. Moore, you say the policy now is card all? We, we have a blanket card all right now, yes. Prior to that, it was card anyone who looked like they were under 50. Correct. Do you have any signage in, in your restaurant that we don't ser serve uh, vertical license or, or anyone under 21? Uh, it, we have the, um, you know, obviously to know, you know, under 21, we, we card, um, but we don't have the vertical signage. Actually, we are working on getting it. Um, uh, we do have uh, another restaurant, a sister restaurant that has some of the vertical signs that we are going to get and put into place. So this, uh, Ms. Phillips worked for the prior restaurant before you became the, uh, the owners or licensee. Correct. So when you became, Mrs. Mr. Ileana, when you became the licensee and took over this restaurant, did you uh, educate her about what your policies were gonna be or? We, we did because we, we had a good amount of staff that came over that worked there previously, but we did do new training and then made sure they were all TIP certified when, before we opened. All right. And what is the policy on vertical IDs? We don't accept them. And, and I think it was from the get-go? Yes. And you personally told um, the server about that policy? Yes, yes, they all knew. And you intend to have some signage to that effect somewhere yes. online? Yes. And is there an incentive program um, at the restaurant uh, for successfully avoiding uh, a bad compliance check? We were just talking about that the other day. We need to have a meeting with Chris, our partner, He's in the. He's had some hospital troubles recently, but so we're gonna have a meeting with him and then put down a real incentive program. Okay. Um, do you have your servers sign anything acknowledging your policies? 
I think they, they sign the, they ha when they, when we hire them, they sign the handbook, the employee handbook. Did you bring that in, the signed handbook? So it's very important when you have a situation like this to bring all that information in. Okay. Mr. Eliani, are you involved with any other um, liquor licenses in Carroll County? No. Have you been in the past? Yes. Which ones were they? It was the um, Casita Romos, but we, we ended up selling that business and we turned the license in. Did you have any Seattle miners in that particular business? We did have one infraction a, a few months ago. I was here. A few months ago? I, th I remember it was um, probably close to a year ago now, mm -hmm. but not too long ago I, I was here. And you were the licensee on that? Yes. Did I understand you to say that all of your employees handling alcohol were tips trained prior to opening or thereabouts? Yes, our employees. We, we made sure our employees were certified before opening. Was Ms. Phillips' certification up to date? Yes. yes. What was her excuse for not asking for ID, did she say? She said she was too busy, even though there were only a, a handful of people at the bar. He said there were less than 10 people there. So she claimed she was too busy, and then she blamed everyone else. She blamed the restaurant after, and then... And then the, she said it was a setup and didn't make any sense. But. Hence the termination of the employee. Um, and I made it very clear to her that, you know, if uh, we can't rely on you to protect the establishment, then we can't have you as an employee. Uh, you know, the number one protocol of everybody who touches alcohol is to make sure that we're doing it in compliance with the rules. Another thing, um, you know. State your name and address, please. I'm sorry. My name's Jessica Windsor, W I N D S O R 1001, Twin Arch Road, Mount Airy, Maryland, 21771. Um, another big impact is when one employee is terminated for, you know, failing to a card or something like that. It's a, a very, very, very big statement to all the other employees as well. Ms. Windsor, what's your, what's your association with the licensee? Uh, I work for the restaurants, uh, the few of the different restaurants. In what capacity? In what capacity? Just the overall management of the restaurants. Multiple. Are you on the payroll for this restaurant? Well, I'm on payroll for all the different ones, not just one. How about this particular one? Uh, I have been at one time. I get paid out of different restaurants, different time periods. Does that make sense? How many different restaurants are there? Uh, well, for it's uh, four right now. And how many are in this county? Three. So, Mr. Eliano, what is her title in your in your uh, restaurant? Um. She's she's like a, a yeah like more like a general manager. She's the GM. Well, Amber is the GM of the the tavern, but she's like she said more of like a general like manager of all the different restaurants. Like she'll go in there and see what see what they need and. So stuff. she's on your payroll. Yes. She's not just a customer. No. <laughs> what are the other three establishments in Carroll County that you service? Uh, New York JP Pizza, the Mount Airy Inn, the Twin Arch Tavern, and then um, there's some outside of Carroll County. You say New York JP Pizza in Mount Airy. Mm hmm. And what else? The Mount Airy Inn. That's at 1401 South Main Street in Mount Airy in Carroll County. And I thought you said three. The Twin Arch Tavern. The one that we're here for today. So, what are your duties? I mean, it's well, got to be more than just walking in, walking out. Oh no, I have a lot of different duties. I help with like licensings and renewals, and and uh, then there's commercial properties, and I help with the commercial property leases, and uh, you know, just a lot of the the upkeep of 
the licenses, leases, and different types of the overall stuff. Inspector Renewals. Do yes. you have a copy? I don't have it in front of me. Of the wave. I do not have a copy. I can go print one if you want one. I apologize. No, that's all right. And with Jesse, um, I look at Jesse as Frank's right hand person. Frank Aranano's. If I need something through the businesses, I usually contact Jesse first. Okay. She's my contact for those three businesses. To your knowledge, the other two businesses have had any violations in the past three years? None. No, none, none that I can remember. We did, I did inspections. Mount Airy Inn is on Main Street, Manor. Mm -hmm. It's on the Carroll County side of Main Street. They have a look at lessons. Yes. And they go across the street, it's Frederick County. It's right next to Dunkin' Donuts. Mm -hmm. That helps the bank. Um. I know about the bank, I know about the train. Mount Airy Inn is okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's New York JP. Yeah. Any other questions? <coughs> Hearing none. Testimony is uh, now closed for presenting evidence. Would you like to make any closing remarks before we deliberate the merits of this case? Um, just that that we we do all we put all the policies in place for the employees to follow all the rules and sometimes you just there's just no reason for why they break the mm -hmm. rules and don't card people but it, it could have worked out for her I think but she just blamed everybody else and made it worse on herself and if there's anything in addition that you know we can do going forward to to help ensure that you know nothing like this happens again then you know we are you know definitely open to every idea and criticism that you know we can take um, we did have a all staff meeting um, a couple of weeks after the infraction happened um, with every single person who works in the front of house to ensure that they all completely understood the ramifications of doing so uh, not only to the restaurant but to themselves you know, a possibility of injury and, you know, uh, to the person, to the guests, as well as to, you know, innocent people. Um, you know, they, you know, everybody is aware. And again, we, you know, took everybody's tips, TAM certification, um, make copies of it. So that way we have it on hand um, as well in case they don't happen to have it on them. And um, we've just thoroughly been enforcing. Um, we are also considering uh, a program where we will have a member of a staff from another restaurant come into one of the other restaurants where they may not be known um, you know kind of what you guys do exactly and you know see if the staff from the other restaurants are are carding as they should be uh, more on a regular basis this way we can ensure that it is you know consistently in their minds that you know it it, it is being checked and it is a big responsibility of theirs to do so as well as like uh, mr liano said about in you know instituting some sort of uh, uh award program for passing these inspections as well you have no other closing comments inspector do you have any closing comments uh, not uh, n nothing really other than what uh, uh mr liano said about uh, her Miss Phillip not taking any responsibility. She was quite obnoxious, and uh, she did say why she didn't serve was because she was very busy. Apart from the two volunteers, there was eight other people within the within the whole establishment. I wouldn't call that busy at that time of the day. And you would or would not call it busy? I would not call that busy. Eight, eight, eight other customers. All at the bar, right? Uh, there was uh, eight at the sorry there was six at the bar and two over the partition in the uh, restaurant part of the uh, establishment i apologize for the way she treated you guys That's too okay. I'm, like, I'm, used to that. I'm, I'm sure but that was <laughs> yeah. uh, mr pond do, do you know any involvement that the server has had with the uh, state's attorney's office uh i think mr bench will be able to tell you more about that <clears throat> um the server did attend 
the diversion program. Um, she left several times throughout the program. Um, she was almost crying. She said she's not a drunk driver and she did leave early. Um, but I talked to Cindy who runs the program and she does not want her back. So to your knowledge then, she has not successfully completed the program? I can talk to the state. I, I think she she got I think she got a lot out of it that she by completing it. Um, yes, she didn't stay the whole time, but I think she got overwhelmed. Um, but I can talk to state attorney's office and see what they want to ha handle it if the board directs me that way. I think she got enough out of it that it's not worth pursuing it. Does That's anyone it. know if she's working at any other restaurant? That's don't have any way to track that unless you guys have heard anything. Uh, last I know, she filed for unemployment. Um, in which they contacted me and I did speak with the unemployment um, office uh, and you know told them exactly what happened that she became uh, argumentative with you as well as with me afterwards I did speak with her on the phone immediately after the infraction um, and you know I just I told him it was her you know you know inability to take responsibility for mm -hmm. the infraction is to her reason for termination and um, she did try to tell the unemployment office that we fired her for different reasons, but I did notify them. Uh, it was because of how she treated you guys and how she reacted to the situation. What, what is Miss Phillips' age? Do you know? She is, I believe, she's in her fifties. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Spectre, do you have any other co closing comments? Uh, no, Miss Brolin, no. If not, uh, testimony is uh, closed. And we will now discuss the merits of the case and deliberate for a decision. Gentlemen, you have heard the uh, comments by the inspector as well as the licensee and several employees. Uh, I think personally there was sufficient training as presented by the licensee and the manager uh, and the evidence presented on behalf of the server indicates that uh, she was less concerned about upholding the law than her own personal feelings. Uh, by not taking responsibility whatsoever and blaming everyone else and of course the licensee immediately terminated them. Uh, it goes back to what I have been saying for several years about vertical license. Uh, it's clear to me the photographs of the two gentlemen that were served certainly uh, don't approach 50 years of age if that was the policy at that time yes. uh, and certainly not checking and if she would have checked she would have saw a vertical ID and who knows whether she would have continued to serve them or, or refuse them so uh, with those comments uh, I'm interested in my colleagues so. Well, Mr. Chairman, I, I completely agree with you on, on every point you made. I think this is a situation of a server failure more than licensee failure, although ultimately under the law the licensee is responsible. But uh, your testimony uh, indicates that you have a, a, a good policy that all servers are TIPS TAM certified. Uh, your ID policy was very sensible at the time and now it's even more ironclad if you, if you uh, going to card all, which is easily checked. Uh, you can send someone from another restaurant, even if they're of age, they should be carded. Yeah, so that's, exactly. that's easy for you to, to make sure that that policy stays in force. Um, and your policy of no vertical IDs is also a, a good safeguard that you've, you've implemented since the beginning. Uh, the only unpositive thing that come out of this uh, hearing is that this was your first compliance check. Right. But then again, I agree with, with the uh, chairman. It's a server failure. Sometimes you 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 have this, um, uh, and I do agree with the chairman that you 
I've taken very good reasonable steps to prevent this from happening, but there is one point of contact that unless you're on their shoulder, sometimes you can't do anything about it. So those are my thoughts, Mr. Chairman. I happen to agree with Mr. Barnhart and uh, Chairman Browning. I agree with both of them, everything that they said. Um, it's unfortunate, but sometimes you can do everything necessary to try to prevent a sale to minors. But you have a rogue server, and, and I believe that this was a rogue server um, who didn't really care about the restaurant or your policies. Um, two things I would like to see you do, well, actually three things. One is to get more signage. Uh, and it's particularly on the front door that says we don't serve vertical license. Second, I think if you developed an incentive program, a server gets 50 bucks if they catch someone trying to, to be served underage, I think they would start checking everybody. Um, and then self-testing is a very good, as you brought up, is a very good way to test your, uh, your employees and your servers. Um, so with all that said, um, and to keep in mind that there were two two underage people that came in. So, uh, I mean, we could charge you for two, but I believe that you guys are conscientious about trying not to serve uh, minors. Um, so with all that said, I could make a motion if it's okay with the chairman. <clears throat> yes, sir. So I make a motion to uh, define you culpable for a sale to, sale to minor. Um, and um, I find uh, the Twin Arch Tavern culpable of sale to minor and would fine you $300. Is there a second to the motion? I would make an amendment, uh, Mr. Chairman, to suspend 150 of that on condition that there are no violations in a two-year period from today's date. motion has been made uh, there's not been a second but a motion for uh, an amendment I'll second that with just uh, one other uh, change and that would be um, within the regular time period that uh, we have for checking sale to minors which would be I think it's five years is it yes we usually go back five years yeah. so within a five-year period and we would suspend 150 of that Okay, I will second the motion to suspend 150 of the uh, fine uh, on the condition that during our five-year waive period there are no further violations um, at the Twin Arch Tavern, along with uh, suggestions that uh, Commissioner Harmoning has made uh, uh, going forward. But uh, just so the record's clear, I, I feel the suspension is justified in this case because I do feel it is a server failure uh, it's um, almost unavoidable and, and we've had these in the past a and and I personally like to take that into consideration to some extent and I think the fact that you have a five-year window not to do it again uh, is a good incentive if, if it does happen if you do come before us again within the five-year period there'll be a separate consideration of that penalty plus this penalty will be reimposed I'm, the, the, I'm sorry the suspended part portion this penalty If I understand correctly, the motion is that we find the licensee culpable of sale to a minor and a $500 fine to be issued with $150 of that suspended. No, that's incorrect, Chairman. It would be $300 fine. What did I say? $500. i am sorry. I meant $300. But the motion says that a $300 fine be assessed, and if there are no violations within a five-year period, that $150 is suspended, waived, whatever the word you want. Any further discussion on the motion? No. no. My only comment about the motion is this violation occurred within a very short period of time <coughs> after the license was issued. Therefore, uh, I understand the reasoning behind both the motion and the amendment that was offered and so on and so forth, but in the essence of a very short period of time, even though everything was done probably, possibly, uh, by the licensee, 
that this occurred in a very short period of time. And if I remember some of the testimony when the license was issued, it was strictly noted that the licensee would adhere to all the rules and regulations, which included not selling to minors. However, with that said, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The chair will abstain. Let the record show the chair abstains, please. The motion passes. We find you culpable of a sale to a minor under case number 6410 of a beer, wine, and liquor license issued to Dario Iliano for the use of Two Eagle LLC trading as Twin Arts Tavern. 1001 Twin Arts Road, Suite 20, Mount Airy, Maryland, 21771. You will have up to 30 days upon written notice of the official action of this commission to satisfy the fine. You understand that the fine is $300, however, $150 of it is waived. If there are no other violations within a five-year period, and if, and hopefully that that never happens, but if it does, this case can be reopened and that fine that's suspended will be due. With that, thank you very much. We hope we don't see you back here in that same situation again. Good luck for continued success at the restaurant. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <coughs> I'm gonna go upstairs and get them some signage. That's all right by the board. Go ahead. Please back my car. With that, it. I would ask that our attorney, Mr. Dixon, call our next case six four one one. All right, case 6411, an application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor license to be issued to Omar Ambrose Toga for the use of Cinco de Maya Hampstead, Inc., trading as Cinco de Maya Hampstead, 721 Hanover Pike Suite, 153 Hampstead, Maryland, 21074 in Election District 8. In the file of this matter, we have the following documents. There's a number of policies in the front. Signage. Then we have a uh, response to Joe Vance's request to various state and local agencies. A, re a response from <coughs> Oh, Tammy Ledley, town manager of uh, Hampstead. The above referenced establishment does meet the requirements of this office. There's a notice of public hearing in the paper. <coughs> August 26, 2022. There is a response uh, to Joe Vance's request to various state and local agencies from Lisa Staley, Health Department. The above referenced establishment does meet the requirements of this office. There's an advertisement in the paper for this case, August 19, 2022. <clears throat> there is a response from Belinda Gazelle, Collections Office. The above referenced establishment does meet the requirements of this office. Joe Vance sent an August 8th, 2022 letter to Mr. Ronald Carr, uh, Revenue Specialist, Comptroller of the Treasury. And then, let's see, there's a August 1st, 2022 letter from Omar Ambrose Toga to the board. 
Then there is a application, and the application includes All right, the application includes character references, a lease, a menu, driving record, SDAT information, uh, CGIS information, TAM certifications, naturalization papers, workman's comp insurance, a floor plan, other licensed establishment, corporate information, plot plan, and financial information. I would ask that the file be entered into evidence. Thank you. We'll accept that into evidence. At this time, I would ask all those who intend to testify in this case, please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in by Ms. Vance. Do you swear or affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. You all may be seated. Fort. Evidence is presented or testimony. Please state your full name and your address for the record and spell your last name, please. Okay, my name is Jose Antonio Ulloa, U L L O A, and I live at 2150 Warm Forest Drive, Finksburg, Maryland, 21048. You're going to present, present the case? I'm the owner. Of the and he's my partner. We're doing another restaurant in Carroll County, Omar, and he's a character reference for Omar. For the new liquor license. Who's going to tell us why and what they want the license for? Oh well, I can do it. Uh, we're I have a few restaurants in the county, and um, and a good opportunity came to me about doing another restaurant in the Hempstead area, and um, everything made sense, and we decided to go for it, and uh, I think it would. It would be a good addition to the Hempstead um, area. There's not a lot of food there, and um, you know, just another project that I'm very excited about doing in the in the county. Did you have two two existing restaurants in the county? Uh, this one's going to be my fourth in the county. Where are the others? Uh, Westminster, El Ingler Road. The other one is in Baltimore. Street and uh, Westminster, another one's in Tawny Town, and then this one's in Hempstead. Taco, he also owns Taco Loco. Yeah. That's the one at the old Lynn Stoller. And who's on the license of those others? Uh, those are all under me. So you're at the maximum of three? Yes, that's why we got, I partner with Omar. And what percentage of ownership do you have? Uh, 90. And he has 10? Mm hmm I have the stock certificates and stuff on. I'm not sure if I give it to Joe, but got everything here. Yeah. Pretty sure it's in the file. Okay. Have you had any violations in any of the other establishments? We had one, I think, two or three years ago and uh, my Ingler Road location. And how many years have you had a restaurant in Carroll County? I think I'm going to eight or nine. I think I opened it in 2013. And do you have any other restaurants in any other locations outside of Carroll County? Uh, yes. I have, a, so I have two in Frederick County. I have one in Montgomery County. I have one in Howard County. And I have two in uh, West Virginia. Busy man. A little bit. But I do live in the county, so. Downtown Finksburg, according to your address. Finksburg, yes. So in your corporation, there are two stockholders. Yes. You and, and Mr. Ambrose Toga. Correct. And how much did Mr. Ambrose Toga pay the corporation for that stock? Uh, Five thousand dollars just for the initial investment. I got everything Joe has in her package. And who are the officers of the corporation? 
It's just me and him. And, and you are the president. Correct. And do you hold any other offices in the corporation? Uh, no, that's I think that's about it. On those. You have a, do you have a secretary? I'm I'm all I'm everything, the secretary, president, and uh, treasurer. Treasurer, yeah. So how's your restaurant doing in Tony Town? It's actually doing really good. The community really uh, is supporting it. They really don't have nothing that they can kind of go in and ha have full service. And we've gotten uh, we've gotten a very good support uh, on that restaurant. So it's really not much food up there. Yeah. So you know, and we're a family restaurant. You know, that caters to not you know everybody. So right. it's done well for me. Good. Did you require all your employees to be TIPS or TAM certified? Uh, yes. Um, we usually do it around once or twice a year when we open a new restaurant or when we have a you know ten or 15 that are, are going to expire or new employees, we usually get it done. I do it personally. I, I hire usually Martin Johnson, and he mm -hmm. does all my uh, okay. classes for my employees. So they're all TIP certified. Good. Looks like you have a policy where you card everyone. We do, no vertical we IDs. Have a policy. Yeah. Uh, so we have two uh, handbooks one is the employee handbook, and one is the Basically, for servers that serve alcohol, that's more specific on, you know, what IDs we can can accept, um, the reward if you pass, you know, uh, one of your tests. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we and if they don't pass it, we terminate them. You know, there's a lot of stuff, you know, for the, you know, the the, the three steps and checking IDs. There's a, there's mm -hmm. a handbook on the employees to mm -hmm. read everything, so so they're very aware of what they have to do and what they can't do. Right. Who does the, uh, the day to day managerial duties? Well, I have Omar. He actually just recently moved to uh, Westminster. He used to live in West Virginia. So he's more centerized here now. Mm -hmm. He's going to be doing the operations of, he's the one, the, he's the district manager. And I do go to the restaurants you know, almost every day to all of them. But, you know, we also have uh, <coughs> security cameras, so we're constantly having an eye on, on, uh, on all the restaurants. But who is responsible <coughs> in the restaurant day to day? Oh, for this one, uh, probably one of my other uh, assistant managers that are locally here. That are, that's, uh, we have two or three people that are still kind of trying to figure out which one's going to move to Hampstead. So not 100% sure who's going to be yet, but there's going to be somebody that's working <coughs> for a good amount of years before, you know. But well, obviously, we'll, we'll be on top of them. We just won't let them there, and we'll keep an eye on them and make sure everything's running correctly. But I'm not sure who's going to be going to that restaurant yet. So each restaurant has their own general manager, right? Well, we have uh, managers, assistant managers. And then we have the, the district manager checks over them. So we have one up here and the managers and the assistant managers. So um, we have some that have been here for a few years. Okay. That, you know, they show they're capable, that want to, you know, be promoted. So that's what uh, we're going to end up doing in Hempstead, promoting somebody that's worked with me. We don't, I like to hire, I don't like to hire outside for big, you know, for managers, right. main cooks. I like to do them in-house because we have a set of rules that we want them to continue to be the same way. I don't want to get somebody at a, a different restaurant that come and change everything for me. I don't. I don't want that. So it's usually in in house when we promote them. And and you're and you're definitely sure that you have a card all policy. Everybody that comes in that restaurant is carded. Yes. Yes. We even have a sign in the front that says no vertical IDs. And every POS station I I, I put on evidence that says no vertical IDs. You know, and every computer. Regardless of age, everybody yeah. gets carded. Well, we try to do, you know, if we're like 50, 60, we you don't have to, but I think it's under 40, 45. So it's not a car at all. <coughs> I think there's there's a limit to where you can, right? You know, I don't want to be courting somebody that's, you know, a little bit too old. Sometimes they don't even have their ID; they just leave it at their car. Yeah. And I want to send them out, but. So I'm looking at your alcohol sale policy age verification page that your employee signs. It says every customer asking for alcohol must hand you 
his or her ID card. Okay. And then you have a list of acceptable ID cards. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, is I that mean, your is that your policy? Our policy is what well, this is what the employees do, right? You know, I mean, we have somebody that's 80, 85. You know, we don't have to make him. If they're like, oh, can you see your ID? And like, oh, I don't have it in the car. We just feel sometimes offended of them going all the way out and getting an ID. But we try to make sure that everybody gets carded, because you know we're not in, we're not in the business of selling to minors. You know, I'm not where I'm at for selling to minors. I have a business yeah. that I want to, you know, be successful. So that, you know, I spend a lot of money and time on doing all these contracts and getting tips certified to all my employees. I don't send them to. Um, the county and they, no, I get, you know, Martin Johnson, they, he does it personally for me because I want them to make sure that, you know, they're concentrating, I want to make sure they're there, not you send, you know, five minutes, 20 minutes away to another county. I like to do it in-house to make sure they, how serious these things are. And how long have you known Mr. Omar Toga? Oh, for a long time, 15, maybe 16 years. How long does he work for you? Around the same time. He actually started working with, um, when I worked for my brother at another restaurant, so my brother ended up moving to Pittsburgh and did more restaurants, and that's how I started, me and him kind of, were. he saw me from the beginning, basically. And what will his role be in the operations of your restaurant? Uh, well, he's going to be making sure, you know, the policies are, are in place that they have to follow, that, you know, making sure that Everything that's required by the law in um, inspections, licenses are up to date. You know, he, he's only going to live maybe 10 minutes away from there. So it's going to be a pretty local short stop for him from his house. Well, I'd like to ask Mr. Uh, uh, Togo a question. Um, can you state your name? Have you stated your name and address? Oh, already? Um, my name is Omar Ambrose Toga, and my address is 440 Irish Rebel Road. Westminster. Okay. And, uh, and you've heard the description of your involvement with uh, Cinco de Mayo. Yes. And do you agree with that, that that's how you'll be involved? Yes. Well, yeah, uh, I think he forgot to mention that whenever he opens a new restaurant, I go to the new restaurant to make sure that we set up everything as if it was an all restaurant. Um, so like, like he said, we bring somebody that is already working as a manager or assistant manager in another location and give him a few more months of training, like letting him do everything by himself, but me being there every day okay. in the beginning. But there'll be a general manager. Yes. And, and that will not be you. Not me. Yeah, not me. Okay. Each restaurant has its own general manager. As resident agent and as minority uh, stockholder of the corporation, you'll be in there checking on things. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, have, have you ever seen one of these yellow booklets with the rules and regulations of the liquor board? Yes. Okay. Do you have a copy? Um, we have uh, at the restaurant, at <coughs> each restaurant we have one. Okay. Are you familiar with what's in this booklet? Yes. Okay. Do you have a scanner at your restaurants that scans the license? Scanner, uh, we, we, had, we bought one, it wasn't too good, and uh, we haven't gotten another one. I okay. think me and I talked to Keith about it a few years ago when we were having a lot of college kids going to the restaurant, mm -hmm. um, but we, we don't, we don't. How's the Taco Loco restaurant? Is that doing well? It does well. It's more of a lunch crowd and yeah. more of a carry out, so, but the Cinco de Mayo's are more of a full service restaurant. Mm -hmm. Are you presently in operations? Yeah. Okay. Not in, not in Hampstead? Not, not this one. Oh, I, I, Taco Loco, yeah, we're open. All right, I'm sorry. I, that was a bad question. This one is? No, we're still under construction. Okay. Yeah, so I think, uh, plus our boots are not gonna be here till December 6th, so we still have plenty of time to take our time on fixing it up. It was a Chinese restaurant before, so now you just need to switch it over. Is it in a shopping center up yes. there? Yes, it's to the right of um, CNR Pub and um, that's not the Robert Fields, right? Brewery. Yeah, the yeah it's Fields. Pipe, to side, pipe to Side Brewery. Pipe to Side Brewery and Robert Fields. And Mr. Dixon lives right behind there, so he'll be doing multiple checks. Uh oh, <laughs> you can check in on him. <laughs> I miss him. <laughs> um, I mean, lunch and dinner there, too. Huh? <laughs> and um, 
Mr. Ulo, are those, uh, a you have one character witness? Yeah. All right, so just for record, I ask you, do you feel that Mr. Ambrose Toga is a person who is qualified, fit and proper to hold a liquor license in Carroll County? Yes. Okay. yes. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Guillermo Lara. My address is 609 uh, Cranberry Lane, Westminster, 21157. Spell your last name, please. L-A-R-A, -A Lara. Mr. Toga, are you on any other license? No. This is your, your first and first, only? Yeah. Mr. Chairman, um, Inspector Pullen did print a ch wave chart out. Um, I can give you the um, Cinco de Mayo in Westminster has been checked 12 times. They have two violations, once in September 2020 and again in September 2019. I'm sorry, um, I was doing something. Okay. Which they one? In Cinco de Mayo in Westminster, the, the original location, one violation September 2019, another violation September 2020. And this is Cinco de Mayo in Westminster? Yep. And they, they were checked 11 times, and they had two violations. And Mr. Ulo is the licensee on that? Yes. Tawny Town has not been checked yet. They, we haven't had an opportunity to get up there yet to check on Tawny Town. Taco Loco has been checked once, and they passed. Well, then I, I would ask Mr. Uh, Loa if you have any comments about the information that we just received from our inspector. Oh, yeah. Um, I, uh, that was twice in, I think, nine years I've opened. Um, the last time it happened, it was happened, I guess, 2020. It was through a pandemic. It was a new server. You know, she was just, we had a, she was, she was a wreck, so. You know, we ended up, uh, she, she, she did what the state wanted to do, uh, the course or whatever. Uh, all I can say is apologize, but you know, we have all these rules in place. We've had them at all my restaurants. They signed it, I, she, I even brought a thing that time, proof of the contract that she read it and signed and initial every page. Mm -hmm. So you know, we try to do as much as we can so mm -hmm. for them not to right. slip. So, so you put into evidence uh, an employee policy handbooks of several pages that the employee signs, which outlines uh, serving of alcohol mm -hmm. and in the and that is uh, a document that you use in your other restaurants correct okay and that document was used with Cinco de Mayo in Westminster mm -hmm. and the server had, was aware of your policy there mm -hmm. I, I turned it into uh, evidence that time she okay. initialed every page mm -hmm. yeah. and signed the contract so she knows the rules and you know I, I, I don't know why she didn't she said she wasn't there thinking correctly. I don't. I really don't know. But other than that, all the other 11, 12 times we we pass. You know, we're we try to do our best. But sometimes, you know, employees. You know, they they don't they don't do what they have to do. But we do have an intensive program that we give them a hundred dollars when they pass. You know, and every time we pass, we have a meeting at the end of the night, and we give them a check, and we more that's sort of to motivate everybody that's working at the restaurant. You know, because I'd rather give him a hundred dollars and then be happy and you know us yeah. being here, you know. You have a record of how many times you've given that incentive out? Oh, I don't, but it's every time. I mean, for a hundred dollars, I I'd rather do that and have everybody happy and motivate yeah. the employees. That's a good program. So, Mr. Benfer, how many successful compliance checks have there been uh, for all of this gentleman's licensed premises? Um, Cinco de Mayo, Westminster, nine times, um, and Taco Loco, one time. We have not checked to Cinco de Mayo in Tony Town yet. So Taco Loco opened a year ago, and Cinco de Mayo and Tony Town opened, uh, I think, in March or April. Yeah. Fairly new. March. March. Mr. Toga, I'm not quite familiar with West Virginia license anymore. On your driver's license refers to a medical examiner's report. 
Is that required in West Virginia, or what's the reason for that? Um, honestly, I wouldn't. I don't know. He's dead. You having medical problems? Nope. Nope. Major thing. Or Nothing that affects your ability to drive. No. Have you ever been charged in West Virginia with driving under the influence of no. drugs or alcohol? You don't wear glasses or anything like that? No, I don't know why it says that. I don't <laughs> I've never seen that before in my driving record. As expiration date of medical examiner certificate, certification status, medical variance expiration date. Restrictions, self certification status, whatever that means. I don't know. I don't know what that is. I don't know either. I I used to be familiar with all these, but I haven't seen one officially yeah. for 17 years. I don't know what it is. I recently got my driver's license in Maryland, and it doesn't say anything like that. Right? Three speeding violations. Yeah. And three points. Three points for the last one, driving too fast for conditions. How much time will you spend in this restroom per week? Um, I would say uh, at least, well, in the beginning, like every day, <coughs> and then after a few months, probably like two days a week. What, what are the hours of operation going to be? Uh, 11 to 10, Monday through Thursday. Friday and Saturday, 11 to 11. And then Sunday, 11.30 to 9.30. So, is that your standard hours he across the board? Three applicants. Does that sound right? Any other questions, gentlemen? No. Uh, just of the character witness, I guess. <coughs> did, uh, uh, did the character witness testify yet? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. You asked a question. Yeah. Oh, I thought I was asking um, Mr. Uloa the question about where he's fit and proper. And uh, I assume that the, uh, this witness also said he's fit and proper person to hold yeah. a liquor license. I'm sorry, I missed that. There are no other questions. Uh, Testimony is uh, complete. Now we would ask if you have any closing comments. No. If in and but why or anything like that. So. No, I'm excited to see you guys again, but that's about it. I don't really. I think that uh, the county, the area would would, uh, would benefit from having a the restaurant there. You know, more options. But that's about it. I was uh, checking the file when this was discussed. Where, where is 721 Hanover Pike? It's by the McDonald's, behind the McDonald's in uh, Hanover. I think across the street is like a factor. I forgot okay. the name of the factory. When you say, I, Roberts Field Shopping I Center. I got you, Roberts Field. I got you. <clears throat> like the sign. It's back there next to one of the, one of the L's. See, in our, right, it's yeah. the old Chinese restaurant that was back there. Inspector, do you have any closing comments? Um, knowing Antonio, I've known Antonio since I started working here six years ago. Um, knowing how he does restaurants, how he hires his staff, I think he, he, they would do a very good job, fit and proper to have a liquor license. I mean, if we had a limit, if we didn't have a limit on how many liquor licenses they could have, I think Antonio should be on this license, but we have a limit of three, so. Um, but he's there all the time. Anytime I need a question, I pick up the phone and he calls me or I call him, so it's no problem. There are no other comments. Testimony and evidence is closed, and we will now deliberate as to the <coughs> qualifications of this applicant and hopefully come to a decision. Gentlemen? Well, I think uh, if I could go first. I think Mr. Toga is probably fit and proper to ha hold a li liquor license. 
Um, I can tell you Antonio's restaurants are the most professional. The, the food is excellent uh, and they're run very well. Um, so I think it would be an asset to Hampstead um, to have one of his restaurants up there. I've, I've certainly been to all his other ones and, and uh, they're like cookie cutters. They're all managed the same way. Um, so I would, be, I would be in favor of it. Well, Mr. Chairman, um, uh, uh, the positive comments from Commissioner Harmoning are, uh, I put a lot of weight in what the Commissioner's just said uh, with his personal experience with um, this owner. And this owner obviously uh, is very supportive of the uh, applicant uh, to be on the license. Um, and Inspector Benford offered some very important and supportive testimony also. Uh, so based uh, on what I've heard today, I feel that this applicant is uh, qualified um, to be a holder of a liquor license in Carroll County. And, uh, and it's, uh, of course, fortunate that, that he's associated with um, a quality restaurant owner like Mr. Lower. Uh, I would be prepared to make a motion, uh, Mr. Chairman, if there's nothing else to be added. There's no other comments. Uh, Mr. Chairman, in the case of 6411, I move that the application of, the, uh, of Omar Ambrose Toga for a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license for the use of Cinco de Mayo Hampstead, Inc. Uh, be approved by this board. Is there a second? I second that. Motion's been properly made and seconded that this board approve the application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor license to be issued to Omar Ambrose Toga for the use of Cinco de Mayo Hampstead, Inc. Trading as Cinco de Mayo Hampstead, 721 Hanover Pike Suite 153, Hampstead, Maryland, 21074. Is there any further discussion on the motion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. So ordered. Congratulations. Best wishes. Thank you very much. Now, Thank you very much. just one comment. It's my understanding, we, we, we've approved the license, okay? It's my understanding that you are not ready to open not yet. It's looking more like December. We're having a delay on the furniture arriving. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to take a break, but before we do, just one comment. <laughs> Sometimes we've issued these licenses and over an extended period of time, they've never been opened. I think it's time that we, when we approve a license, put a time limit on that license. I agree. So perhaps we should consider that in future applications and so on and so forth. With that being said, we are going to take a eight minute process.
Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're back now in session, and at this time, I would ask our attorney, Mr. Dixon, to call case 6412. All right, case 6412, an application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor license to be issued to Fernando A. Bargerano, Jamie Garcia, and Carlos Garcia for the use of Las Aztecas 2, Inc., trading as Las Aztecas 2. 1604 Ridside Drive, Mount Airy, Maryland, 21771 in Election District 13. In the file of this matter, we have the following documents. Notice of public hearing dated August 26, 2022. A response to Joe Vance's request to various state and local agencies from Lisa Staley Health Department. Uh, the above referenced establishment does meet the requirements of this office. There's an August 19, 2022 notice of public hearing for this case. There's another response from Director of Planning and Zoning for the Town of Mount Airy. The above referenced establishment does meet the requirements of this office. There is a response uh, to Joe Vance's request to various state and local agencies from Belinda Gassell Collections Office. The above referenced establishment does meet the requirements of this office. There's August 8th, 2022 letter from uh, Joe Vance to Mr. Ronald Carr, Revenue Specialist, Comptroller of the Treasury. Then there's August 8th, 2022 letter from Joe Vance to Fernando Bajorano, uh, Jamie Garcia, and Carlos Garcia. There's an August 4th, 2022 letter from Kelly Schaefer Miller to the board. And then there's an application, and the application includes character references, CGIS information, MVA records, workman's comp insurance, a lease, a ground lease, a menu, a floor plan, a plot plan, SDAT information, local licensed establishments, articles of incorporation, corporate information, naturalization, certificates, stock information, SDAT information. I would ask that the file be entered into evidence. We'll accept that into evidence. This time I would ask all those who intend to testify in the case, please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in by Ms. Vance. Do you swear or affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. You may be seated. And may I remind you all, as I'm sure Ms. Kelly will, before you testify, please state your full name and your address for the record and spell your last name. With that, Ms. Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Kelly Schaefer Miller, 73 East Main Street, Westminster, Maryland, 21157. I'm here today on behalf of the applicants, uh, Los Aztecas 2 Incorporated. Um, there are three applicants, as you're aware from, from reviewing the file and from Mr. Dixon's introduction. Um, Fernando, Jaime, and Carlos are the three applicants here today. Uh, Los Aztecas 2 Incorporated, um, again, as you'll see from your review of the file, these three applicants are three officers of that corporation. Um, so Fernando is named the vice president, Jaime is named the treasurer, and Carlos is named secretary of that uh, corporation, as you will also see in the file. The location that's being applied for today um, is what was formerly known as the Green Turtle in Mount Airy, and then after Green Turtle became Casita Romos, um, and now Los Aztecas II has entered into a lease to lease this space in Mount Airy to open uh, a second location of Los Aztecas. As this board is familiar and will recall, Los Aztecas currently has an operation in Eldersburg, uh, right at the intersection of 32 and 26 in what's known as the Princess Shopping Center. This location that's been applied for today will be in addition to that existing Los Aztecas. This is not intended to replace uh, that location. So with that introduction, unless there are any 
introductory questions, I will call my first witness. I have one introductory yes. question. Um, it says on, on our case that it's um, uh, Fernando Bejarano, but on, on here it says Fernando Lopez, Bejarano Lopez. I'm sorry, what are you, can you tell me what you're looking at too? Uh, yeah, I'm looking at the, um, the FBI criminal investigation form. Fernando, what's your legal name? <laughs> Well, my full, my full name is actually Fernando, middle name Alonso, last name Bejarano Lopez. Okay. It's a hyphenated, yes. is it hyphenated? It's actually two separate. Okay, okay. Okay, so what is your exact last name, Lopez, or the whole thing? The whole thing, yes. Okay, because <laughs> okay. you don't have that, it's not listed on the application here, that's all, that's why I was wondering. Yeah. Sorry. I no, think, that's okay. I think all three of them are that way. Okay. When you get to their uh, criminal background. Okay. Sure. And there are also, I will also point out that there are naturalization certificates that have been attached, copies of which were attached to the application as well. <coughs> that I will call my first witness. Uh, I would first call Mr. Fernando. Fernando, can you please state your name, spelling your last name, and your address for the record? Um, Fernando Bejarano Lopez, last name B E J A R A N O L O P E Z. Um, address 715 Hiss Court, Westminster, Maryland, 21157. Fernando, can you please tell the board just a little bit about yourself, you know, where you live and, and your role at Los Aztecas? Um, well, in 2020, we, uh, we were blessed to, buy, to be able to buy a house here in Westminster. Uh, so I live here in Westminster. Uh, my role in Los Aztecas is uh, I'm a manager of Los Aztecas, and uh, we opened in 2016. And um, so far, so good. And how long have you resided in Carroll County? Uh, since 2016. Are you a registered voter and taxpayer in Carroll <coughs> County? Yes, I am. Are you currently employed at the existing Los Aztecas restaurant in Eldersburg? Yes, yes, I am. But you heard me introduce, and is it accurate to say that this application here today is for a new location? That's correct. And again, is it accurate that this is intended to be the second location of Los Aztecas? Yes, that's correct. And you will be leasing this space, correct? Correct. Okay. Are, is, is the space currently undergoing renovations prior to any operation of a new restaurant? Yes, yes. Do you have an anticipated, or I should say hopeful in, in today's world, uh, <laughs> opening date? We are trying to open by the end of the year. Um, that all depends on the equipment, uh, cause, because of COVID, it takes a little bit longer right now to, to get all the equipment. So hopefully by the end of the year, if not the beginning of next year. Generally speaking, I'm going to ask you, is the intent of this location to be run and operated similar to the existing Los Aztecas? Yes, that's correct. So can you, can you say your anticipated hours of operation and days of operation? Uh, yes, well, Monday through Thursday would be uh, uh, 11 to 10 p.m. Then Friday is um, 11 to 11, Saturday 12 to 11, and then Sunday uh, 12 to 10. Are those the same hours that the existing Los Aztecas restaurant also operates with? Yes. And in terms of the restaurant menu, will that mirror and be the same as the existing Los Aztecas menu? Yes, that's correct. With this application, we submitted a copy of the floor plan. Um, can you just generally describe to the board uh, the floor plan in terms of how many stories is the building? Is there an outdoor patio area? That that's those are the details that I'm looking for. Um, yes, there's actually two um, main sections, if you can say, uh, of the restaurant. There's a there's an indoor uh, section. Uh, we're gonna have plenty of booths, uh, booths for two, four, six people. And then we're going to have an open area with uh, tables. Uh, inside the restaurant, there's going to be a, a bar, and then some uh, stools too for the bar. Also, there's a, there's an um, outdoor area. Uh, it's a fenced uh, patio. Uh, we also have a bar there, and then and then we have uh, tables and some stools in there too. 
So there will be, out and you are requesting from this board as part of the licensed area, uh, an outdoor patio, correct? Yes, that's correct. And that is shown in the application um, specifically on its own page as the patio floor plan, correct? Correct. In terms of interior seating, this is shown on, on the floor plan itself, but can you uh, confirm that there are more than 50 seats at tables and chairs in the indoor section of the restaurant? Yes, definitely. And are those seating counts kind of um, shown on the floor plan with bold numbers as to how many seats are at each table? Yes, that's correct. Is this, what type of operation is this in the sense that, um, is this a, a restaurant operation where every table is served by a waiter or waitress? Yes, that's correct. So even the outdoor patio, all of those tables, whether permitting would be served, if they're open, would be served by a waiter or waitress? Yes. Okay. What will your role at this location be? Um, a manager. So will you also maintain an active role at the existing Los Aztecas as well? Yes. Will you be the only manager here? Um, no, I'm going to be, uh, well, uh, Carlos and Jaime would be uh, managers too. So the three of you will all have a managerial role at this location. Ac is that accurate? That's correct. Okay. Are you personally TIPS or TAM certified? Um, yes, I am. And are you one of the individuals that's responsible for developing and implementing any training of wait staff or I should say any any staff who's serving alcoholic beverages yes that's correct so can you describe how you go about tips or TAM certifying or if you do employees and, and um, generally speaking what the policy at Los Aztecas 2 will be regarding certification of tips or TAMs um, well, in terms of the certification, uh, we usually put together a class. Um, the rest of the owners of Los Aztecas, uh, they have more restaurants. So what we do, we put together a class and then they get the certification. So basically we do, we outsource the certification, the TIPS uh, training certification. Um, this person comes to the restaurant and then they, uh, they, uh, he certifies all the, all the uh, waiters and waitresses. But we also have an, um, a form that, that's actually internal for, for waiters or waitresses uh, where it says all the rules and regulations that we, that we as a restaurant um, apply. <laughs> uh, for example, that we don't take any vertical IDs. So they have to, um, they, they read this form and then they, um, they acknowledge that they have to check for the ID, they have to check the photo, the, uh, uh, the date of birth, uh, and that we don't take any vertical societies. We also have the... Um, um, hold on, hold on, let me interrupt you real oh, quick so that I don't get lost in okay. my... Okay, <laughs> just to jump in real quick. So you, you hire someone to come to the restaurant to tips or tam certify employees who have not yes. been correct yes okay so you yourself are not certifying uh or you're not a, a trainer for tips or tams no okay and then in addition to that requirement you also have this in-house sort of training is that accurate yes, that's okay correct. and that's what you were starting to talk about correct okay yes okay so let's just be very clear for the board what is your policy on accepting vertical ids uh, we don't take vertical ids okay so staff is trained that no vertical ids are accepted at the establishment is that correct uh, that's correct, yes. Okay. And then I, I, at Los Aztecas, I'll call it one, even though that's not its formal entity name. And then at Los Aztecas 2, will you have similar signage indicating this? Exactly, yes. Okay. Um, I don't know if this board recalls, but some of that signage was testified to during one of the past hearings. So, um, Fernando, can you just kind of explain the signage that's up in the restaurant, that uh, what it says? Yes. Um, well, we have several signs. Actually, uh, Keith uh, helped us out with that. Um, we have several signs saying that we don't take any vertical IDs. We have them at the bar. Uh, we have them at the entrance of the restaurant. Uh, we also have them by the POS. So it's just a reminder for the waiters or waitresses that, uh, that we don't take any vertical IDs. 
you are having you know had a, a significant role in LOSAS take us to date you're aware of this board's rules and and regulations correct and correct in fact is that what's sitting in front of you yes <laughs> you your copy with you okay so um as part of the in-house training do you also train your employees on the rules and regulations of that book yes that's correct okay and you're aware also that this board has uh, adopted, I think, what we call the state's attorney's diversion program, correct? Yes, and we actually have a copy of a letter by the POS, too, just as a, as a reminder, again, for the waiters and waitresses that they can be held um, accountable to. It's not just a restaurant as it used to be before. Okay, so is it fair to say that in addition to that notification, you train your employees on that? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And then what you were you were speaking specifically to having your employees sign something is that something that is an acknowledgement of all of these policies and rules that they're going to be held accountable to? Yes, yes, that's correct. Yes. And what could happen to an employee if they were found to have violated? Does it say in? Um, does it say what could happen? Uh, uh, well, in terms of the state attorney or the uh, the internal. Internal, or, internal. Okay. Uh, well, they can be uh, suspended or terminated, basically. Okay. I'm not, I'm not going to ask you to, to verify exactly <laughs> what the state's attorney would do other than communicating generally to them. Um, for, I introduced in, in my opening statement Loisas Tecas II Incorporated. Is it accurate that this is a new corporation that has been formed to operate this location in Mount Airy? Yes. Okay. And will you be an officer of Loisas Tecas II Incorporated? Yes. What is your title? Um, I'm vice president. And the um, Los Aztecas to uh, there's a document that was included with the application that's titled uh, Informal Organizational Action of the Sole Director, and it's, it's a resolution of the corporation. So I'm going to, um, to just have this in front of everybody uh, up here. But this is the document in the application that specifies their title, their officer positions, and their shares and their um, uh, financial contributions for purchasing the stock. Um, so all of that is in this document that was included in the application. But Fernando, can you please tell us how many, the number of shares that you own? 17.5. Uh, okay, and can you tell us how much you paid for that? 5,000. Okay, and who are the other um, owners just let's okay. why don't you just name them <coughs> and then explain to the board your relationship to them um well jaime nava garcia um i'm a friend of him since 2016 no and he's the one sitting over yes. here correct he's the other <laughs> yes guy. okay and then um well jose de jesus mesa sergio mesa and juan carlos uh, mesa um they are a friend of mine too i i met them in um in, um, when I started working at a restaurant actually in 2008, so they're good friends of mine and my, my wife. And then um, Carlos Garcia, uh, he's a good friend now too. Uh, he's actually working at Los Aztecas right now as a waiter, and uh, he's gonna be a partner of Los Aztecas too. Uh, he's a very responsible young man, so <laughs> I'm very happy for him too. Okay, so of those that you just listed, Jaime and Carlos are both applicants and sitting here with us today, correct? Yes, that's correct. You understand that although the application here lists Los Aztecas II Incorporated, that you are still individually responsible and answer for anything related to this liquor board and this liquor license, correct? Correct. Okay. And you understand that in your role as the resident applicant that this board will look first to you in any communications, issues, any, anything related to your liquor license? Yes. You stated that you're familiar with the board's rules and regulations, but I'll ask you bluntly, are you willing to comply with those rules and regulations? Yes. Those are my only questions of Fernando. Question, gentlemen? None at this time. Thank you. I'm next going to call Jaime. Jaime, uh, we have brought um, Nicole Fuentes, Correct, yes. yes, okay, yes. who um, will be translating. She is a character witness for one of the applicants, but she will also be translating for Jaime as well for today's hearing. So you 
guys let me know if yes, there's any questions at any point. But Jaime, can you please state your name, spelling your last name, and address for the record? Okay, my name is uh, Jaime Nava Garcia. My direction and my address is 6011 Fairfield Line, Sykesville, Maryland. Um, my, my last name is is N A B A Nava Garcia. G A R C A A Garcia. Jaime, have you been present and have you heard all of the testimony of this hearing? Yes. Do you find all of Fernando's testimony to be accurate? Yes. And you personally have filled out and signed the application for this, correct? Yes, correct. On your application, you have noted one instance, I'll say instance because it's not a conviction on your driving record, is that correct? Yes. Can you please briefly describe um, that instance to the board, telling them when it occurred, where it occurred, and what the outcome was? I'm sorry, if you need me, Nicole, if you need me to break okay. that up into when, where, when, where, and the outcome. Está preguntando si puede explicar lo que pasó, dónde pasó, y cuándo pasó, y qué fue el resultado. Entonces ahí me, me ayuda un poquito. Sí, sí, claro. O sea, esto me pasó en el 2008. Ok. En el This incident occurred in the year of 2008. En Anne Arundel. En Anne Arundel County. Cerca de Glen Burnie. Near Glen Burnie, Maryland. ¿Y qué fue el resultado? Ese día... Estuve en una fiesta y tomé. I was in a party uh, with some friends and I had had some drinks. And I went, I fui a mi casa y fue donde policía me agarró. I was on my way home and that's when the police stopped me. Pero ahora me arrepiento porque he aprendido. But I, a través de ahí he aprendido que uno no debe de manejar bajo las influencias del alcohol. I've learned my lesson. I am very uh, repentant of what happened, and I've learned my lesson. I've learned not to drive if I've had any kind of drinking. Ahora soy, ahora soy un padre con cuatro hijos y and now I'm a father of four children, and I'm even more aware of that. Y, y mi testimonio, yo te los explico a mis demás compañeros, que no, no lo hagan. And my experience, I share with others so that they can learn from my mistake. <coughs> Was was there any conviction or anything, or is this just a note on the driving record? You had a DUI. Okay. Jaime, what will your role in Los Aztecas 2 be? Um, manager. And do you have experience in the industry, in the restaurant industry? Yes. Can you just briefly describe your experience in the restaurant industry? Entonces, ¿quién me va a ayudar? Sí. Sí, claro. Ok, mi experiencia es de, como, como manager, eh, checar IDs. My experience as the manager has been to check IDs. Eh, día, día, día y año. The day and the year. Que no, licencias este, verticales no se aceptan and that we don't accept the vertical IDs. Jaime, I'm gonna cut you off real quick because what I'm actually trying to get to is where else have you worked other than Los Aztecas or do you work at Los Aztecas? I want you to tell the board a little bit about, um, to communicate to them whether this will be your first time in a restaurant or whether you've worked there previously. I've been working for 20 years in, rest, in the restaurant business. I worked here for 10 years in the um, kitchen. Y el resto lo he trabajado afuera en el comedor y tengo la experiencia de Oh, mesero. Mesero, manager. I've worked uh, in the kitchen. I've yes. also worked as a, a waiter 
and now I have experience as a manager as well. And you have been named treasurer of Los Aztecas II Incorporated, correct? Yes. Okay. And you heard Fernando say this, but is it accurate that you will be a manager of Los Aztecas II? Yes. Okay. You understand, similar to Fernando, that although the application names Los Aztecas II Incorporated, that you are individually responsible to this liquor board? Yes. Are you familiar with the Carroll County rules and regulations? Yes. Okay. And are you willing to comply with those? Yes. Okay. Those are my only questions of Jaime. And I should have introduced Ms. Nicole Fuentes better. She is actually an interpreter for the Carroll County School System as well. Um, so she has some experience in this, in this field and we are grateful that she was willing to serve in this capacity today. Um, I, I have one question. Um, I mean, how long have you worked at Las Aztecas Eldersburg? Six years. Okay. And during that time, you've been waiter and manager? In, yeah, in chef in the kitchen. In Los Aztecas? In kitchen, yes. Okay. Thank yes. you. Any other questions of this witness? Just to clarify this MVR record here, he, he's only had one? Yes, that's DUI correct. DUI or DWI, whatever it was? Yes, that's whatever. correct. No further questions <coughs> at this time? Should Thank you. Witness, please. My next witness will be Carlos Garcia. Carlos, can you please state your name, spelling your last name, and address for the record? Sure. Uh, Carlos Garcia Casanova, G-A-R-S-I-A, -A, and Casanova, C-A-S-N-O-B-A. And my current address is 1209 Liberty Road, uh, Sykesville, 21784, apartment 217. Carlos, were you present and did you hear all of the testimony of this hearing so far? Yes. Do you find all of the testimony that you've heard to be an accurate depiction of the establishment? Yes, I do. You have filled out and signed this application, correct? Correct. You are named secretary of the incorporation. Is that accurate? Correct. What will your role in this business be? Uh, my new year. And can you, similar to my question of Jaime, can you explain to the board a little bit of your background in the restaurant industry? Well, like, I did work in the kitchen when I was, I think it was back to 2016. And then I started working at Los Aztecas about six, five years ago as a waiter. So you have previous experience in the restaurant industry, yep. correct? You, I'm going to ask you the same question that I've asked the two before you. You understand that this application has been submitted in the name of a corporation, uh, but you understand that you are still individually responsible in terms of the liquor board and the liquor license, correct? Correct. And are you also familiar with the Carroll County Liquor Board's um, rules and regulations? Yes, I am. Are you willing to comply with those? Yes. Those are my only questions for Carlos. So how long has the uh, the first Los Aztecas been open? Uh, for for six six years now. Ten years. Almost six. No, six. Six, six years. Since two thousand. So in those six years, you've had a few sale to minors. Is that correct? That's correct. How many have you had? Two. Okay. And they've all been within a five-year period. We'll see something here. Well, one of them is, was in uh, 2017, and then the other one, 2019. So it's within a five-year period then? Yes. <clears throat> Have you made any changes to your policies since then? Yes. What, what were they? 
Uh, well, that's actually when we started uh, not taking any verticals IDs, and then we also um, we also did this uh, the internal form too. Mm -hmm. Do you have some uh, sort of incentive program that if someone <clears throat> finds uh, or catches one of your server catches someone trying to order alcohol that's underage that they get a, a bonus or like fifty dollars or hundred dollars extra uh, for, for doing that? I'm sorry, what was the question? So there's an incentive program that some of the restaurants give that if their servers catch someone trying to order alcohol that's underage, they'll give them fifty or a hundred dollars extra on their check. Do you have an incentive program? Uh, I we don't have it right now, but I mean, that sounds really interesting. Um, and what signage do you have? I have not had the opportunity to, to visit Los Aztecas. Okay. Um, so what signage do you have in your restaurant? Well, this is this is actually what we have on uh, uh, at the bar, mm -hmm. and then we also have some signage uh, just uh, printed on on uh, by the um, hostess, okay. which is right in the entrance of the restaurant. And then we also have some signage um, right where the uh, we have the POS system. That way, it's a reminder for the for Any, the waiters. Anything on your front door? When you're um, going? Well, the not not at the moment. Okay. Uh, but I mean, it's like when when you uh, well when you come into the restaurant, it's not it's not in the front door. But when you come into the restaurant, you have to go to the hostess area, and that's where we have the, okay. the sign. And those servers that were involved in the uh, sale to minors uh, back in 17 and 19, were they terminated or are they still working? Uh, they're not working there anymore. They're not working there anymore? No. Mr. Benford, can you tell us how many successful compliance checks there have been since uh, November of 2019? Eight. Um, and the back through 2017, March of 2017. Eight since 2017? Correct. Is there a violation in 2019? There's a violation in February 2017, the first check, and then there's another violation in November 2019. Since November of 2019, how many successful compliance checks do you see? Three. Any other questions for this witness at this time? No. Uh, I just quickly, um, Mr. Garcia Casanova. Um, what percentage of the um, common shares of stock do you own in the company? I believe I have 10%. 10%. And how much did you pay for that? I'm going to hand him that document that I was referencing earlier that lists everybody. All right. 2,857. 2,857? How many restaurants do you own? Uh, well, this is going to be my second. Just your second? Mm -hmm. So you have an ownership interest in the Eldersburg Las Aztecas? That's correct. What interest is that? Um, how many shares? Or 15%? 15. Are you on the license at that restaurant? No. Do you have an employee handbook for the for the first Los Aztecas? An employee handbook? Yes. Um, it describes your policies and... Oh, okay. Yes, well, we, we do have a form. Did you bring one? Did you bring it with yes. you? I did bring additional copies. Oh, I believe that this is... Um, so I will hand these up there. Would you like me to mark them, Mr. Dixon? I brought exhibit I think, stickers. I thought it was in the file. It, uh, well, there is one in the file related to Los Aztecas, but I wasn't sure if you wanted me to. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. I 
can I can mark them quickly. Thank you. <clears throat> and here's, this is the page, the first page there um, is the page that was, I believe, entered as an exhibit as part of one of the general <coughs> access Texas hearings as well. So that is something that this board, it's been probably some time, but that is something that this board has seen before. And the ID policy will be at the new restaurant? <coughs> uh, same, we don't take any vertical IDs. And when do you check? When do we check? When, when would you check someone's ID to make sure that they're of age? Um, I mean, if they What age? How old? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you meant like literally when they check, so I appreciate the <laughs> clarification there. I was like, mm. uh. If the person looks uh, 35 years or younger. Okay. Mm -hmm. I assume you check before you serve. That, that's yes. okay. Uh, yes. I wasn't sure. I, no, I, wasn't I appreciate sure. the, the <laughs> clarification because I was a little bit curious about that one. But okay. <clears throat> Ms. Kelly, what you passed out is their current. requirements at the existing restaurant that is what they that's the acknowledgement letter that they require any employees to sign after their in-house training um, at the existing restaurant and then it's been this as well as this one yes exactly this one shows the title of Los Aztecas 2 because this is what will be shown there but it is exactly the same as mm -hmm. the one for Los Aztecas 1 I'm gonna keep this Any other questions at this time? If not, you may move on. I have six character witnesses, uh, two for each of the applicants. I am welcome to call them in any order. Would you prefer that I have all of my applicants sit back and I call them all up at once? I'm, I'm open to any of the board's <coughs> preferences, if you will. Tell them what's your preference. Quickest, uh, easiest for um, Kelly. Okay, I appreciate that. Why don't you all of well, Nicole, you can stay there, but everybody else, please move back, and then and then all of the character witnesses move forward, please. They can. They can use that microphone back there. Okay, and anyone who wants to can also line up at the microphone back there. Whatever's easiest is fine, as long as you're at a microphone so that a transcription can be taken of all of this. That's what matters. Whichever is most comfortable, Joan, ladies. Wayne, you're going to be up first, so why don't you come right here? <clears throat> you realize when you come up here, that's the hot seat. When you stand up there, it's not so hot. <laughs> okay, then everybody stand up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Stand, get close to any of the microphones, okay? So have a seat. Just sit down. I promise I won't be mean. Okay. <laughs> All right, first I'm going to call Mr. Wayne Shea. Mr. Shea, can you please state your name, spelling your last name, and address for the record? Wayne E. Shea, S-H-A-E, 3161 Cardinal Drive, Westminster, Maryland, 21157. Mr. Shea, who are you here for as a character witness today? Fernando. Okay, and approximately how long have you known Fernando? Six years. And in what context, how do you know him? Both professionally and, and personally and, and his wife. him and his wife okay so in your knowledge of Fernando's character do you find him to be a fit and proper person to hold a liquor license yes okay 
I'm going, unless the board has any follow-up. Well, well actually, let me ask you real quick, Mr. Shea, are you familiar with the location in Mount Airy that has been applied for today? Yes. Do you believe that it will be a benefit to the public to continue having a restaurant with a liquor license at this location? Yes. Okay. Those are my only questions of Mr. Shea. Mr. Shea, you have anything bad to say about him? Does he spray your dog or anything like that? You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, other than, other than the fact that he is very uh, oriented, detailed oriented. Well, that's not a bad thing, Mr. No, Shea. No, <laughs> that's the only thing, you know. Could be bad. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, I'll take, if that's my only character flaw, I'll take it. All right, so if there are no board questions of Mr. Shea. I don't know. Okay. okay. I will now, now call Ms. Nicole Fuentes. Uh, Nicole, can you please state your name, spelling your last name, and address for the record? My name is Nicole Fuentes. The last name is F-U-E-N-T-E-S. My address is 6611 Marvin Avenue, Sykesville, Maryland, 21784. And Ms. Fuentes, who are you here for as a character witness today? I'm here for Fernando. Okay. And approximately how long have you known Fernando? Uh, since 2016, about six years. And how do you know Fernando? Uh, he and Clara are friends of my family. Who is Clara? Clara, his wife, I'm sorry. No, that's okay, I just want them to yes. know. So, um, and you've heard all of his testimony here today, correct? Yes, I have. Do you believe that he is a fit and proper person to hold a liquor license? Yes. Okay. Those are my only questions, Ms. Fuentes. Ms. Fuentes? If I had to spell your last name, I would have got it right. Oh, good. But not Mr. Shays. I wouldn't have spelled it S-A-G-A. -A. A -A. <laughs> I have right. no question. No, okay. Um, next, I would call Julio. Thank you. Oh, you're right. See? <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, Julio, can you please state your name, spelling your last name, and address for the record? Julio Portillo, P O R. T I L L O, eighty two zero four Watersetch Road, Dundalk, Maryland two one two two two. And Julio, who are you here for as a character witness today? Jaime. And approximately how long have you known Jaime? I know Jaime since two thousand ten. Okay. And how do you know Jaime? He is married with my sister-in-law. And do you find Jaime to be a fit and proper person to hold a liquor license? Yes. Those are my only questions of Mr. Question. Well, actually, I'll ask him one quick follow-up. Are you generally familiar with the Mount Airy location that they've applied for? Yes. Okay. Do you believe that it will be a benefit to the public to continue having a restaurant at that location with a liquor license? Yes. No questions. No questions. No. Next, I would call, thank you. Thank you, Julio. Next, I would call Karen Galdamez. Did I get it right? Okay. Uh, can you please state your name, spelling your last name, and your address for the record, and make sure you talk into this thing. Um, I'm Karen Galdamez, um, 3613 6th Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21225, G A L D A M E Z. And Karen, who are you here today as a character witness for? Jaime. Okay. And approximately how long have you known Jaime? Roughly 12 years. Okay. And how do you know him? He's married to my sister-in-law as well. Okay. And do you find him to be a fit and proper person to hold a liquor license? Yes, I do. Okay. Questions? No questions. Next. Okay. I would next call James, also known as Ron. <laughs> James, can you please state your, your full name, spelling your last name, and address for the record? James Wynn, W-I-N-N, -N, 1103 English Ivy Court, Sykesville, 2174. And James, who are you here t for today as a character witness? Carlos. Okay. And approximately how long have you known Carlos? Roughly four years. Okay. And how do you know Carlos? From Los Angeles, And you've heard all of his testimony here today as well, correct? Yes. Do you find Carlos to be a fit and proper person to hold a liquor license? Yes, I do. And are you familiar with the location in Mount Airy that has been applied for? Yes. Do you believe that it would be a benefit to the public to have an establishment at that location with a liquor license? Yes. 
are my only questions for Mr. Ronald. Question, Jill? No. Mm -hmm. Next. Okay. Mr. Rick Harris, can you please state your name, spelling your last name, and address for the record? Rick Harris, H A R R I S, 1330 Dennings Road, New Windsor, Maryland, 21776. And Mr. Harris, who are you here for today as a character witness? Carlos. And approximately how long have you known Carlos? Five and a half years or six years. Okay. And how do you know Carlos? Especially in the restaurant. Okay. And do you find Carlos to be a fit and proper person to hold a liquor license? I do, yes. Okay. Those are my only questions of Mr. Harris. Questions? No. no questions. That concludes my testimony unless the board has any questions uh, of me or the applicants. I do not. I do not either. Technically, I don't have any questions, as do my colleagues. However, there's one lady that hasn't testified here. Is she to testify? That is because she is married to an applicant. So well, she. Well, I gathered that by the way she was smiling a while ago <laughs> when they were all up here. So I didn't know whether she was here. She to is here as an observer. To <laughs> testify, or I guess to give moral support. Okay. Right. Any questions of? No. Ms. Kelly? No. Hearing none, testimony is uh, closed. Would you like to make any closing remarks? Incredibly briefly, I would just like to say that um, we are requesting your approval here today of this Class B liquor license. I believe that this establishment itself meets all of the criteria for a restaurant, as you will have heard and see from the file. And I think that you have before you three owners who are very invested in in this location and this restaurant and i i hope that what you will see in the future is a, an excellent successful location in mount airy they shared with me initially that when they first came to carroll county they were kind of hoping to start in mount airy and then just didn't find a location there that suited it so they are excited to have now found a location in mount airy that is available to lease and so I think we're all hopeful that this will be uh, an, a successful location for the continuation of Los Aztecas and uh, with that I would ask for this board's approval of their license today thank you thank you inspectors do you have any comments um, I'm known Fernando so six, six years that I've been inspector here um, I've dealt with him several times he has my phone number I have to call me he has any questions I hope the new restaurant w works as well as it pre as this restaurant does now. Um, I know he had two violations in the past, but I don't think that was their fault, more server's fault. Um, I think he'd be a fit and proper person to have a liquor license. Fernando, since he offered that you have his phone number, <coughs> call him every Sunday afternoon at 1.30. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Does that mean I have to answer the phone? <laughs> if there's no further testimony at this time, testimony evidence is closed. Uh, we will deliberate as a commission as to the worthiness and usefulness of this application. Gentlemen, you have heard testimony. Your comments? Well, Mr. Chairman, I am very familiar with Las Aztecas and Eldersburg. I've had many enjoyable meals there. Uh, we're family and friends, and I feel that that establishment is very well run, uh, very successful, very popular, uh, and it deserves that success and popularity. Um, I expect that Las Aztecas too is going to be similarly well run and popular and successful. Uh, listening to the testimony uh, from the character witnesses, brief as it was, I believe it's, it's all accurate. and. Um, and the comments by Inspector Benfer are also reassuring. Um, so um, I have nothing but good things to say uh, about the restaurant in Eldersburg, and uh, I um, await a motion from my colleagues. Well, I, I, Mr. Barnhart, even though I have not had the pleasure to visit uh, Los Aztecas, I respect Mr. Barnhart's opinion. Uh, he's been there probably many times to eat. so. Um, I think it's probably run very well. Um, I commend you on your 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 policy, uh, written policy. I think it's great. I wish most of the restaurants had something like that 
um, and you, you make your employees sign it, which is really great. Uh, I respect Mr. Benford's uh, opinion on it, so with all that said, I can make a motion if, um, Chairman, you're okay with that. So on uh, case uh, number 6412, application for a new B Class B beer, wine, and liquor license to be issued to, and excuse me for pronunciation, uh, Fernando uh, Bejanano, uh, Jamie Garcia, and Carlos Garcia for the use of Los Aztecas II Incorporated um, at 1604 Ridgeside Drive, Mount Airy. I would uh, make a motion to approve. I second that motion. Motion has been properly made and seconded that this commission approve case 6412, which is an application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor license to be issued to Fernando Biero, Yami Garcia, and Carlos Garcia for the use of Las Aztecas II. Trading as Las Aztecas II, 1604 Ridgeside Drive in Mount Airy, Maryland. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Congratulations. Best wishes. Thank you. We Thank hope you are as, as successful at this location as you are presently. Thank you very much. If there's any much. questions, don't hesitate. You're a very competent attorney and our inspector or office. Thank you. Thank you. Just one note, uh, I'm sure Ms. Kelly will probably tell you, but you have to go and leave the building the same entrance that you came in because they're going to take that wonderful little temporary badge off of you. So they know that you're not holed up in a <laughs> locker somewhere. Great. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you all. Good luck and best wishes. Thank you. You get another one of these. I look forward to seeing you this So you will see us? Oh. Congratulations. Okay. Your time will be limited to two minutes this afternoon. <laughs> I'll prep accordingly. <laughs> do we, we want to uh, prove some of this business this noon, or you want to come back and do it? What's your pleasure? It is lunch. we got to be back here by um, we got to be here two. By two, but we got to do this. So you want to go to lunch first, or you want to do some of this? Lunch, lunch first. Yeah, lunch let's first. Let's lunch first. Uh, what time are we coming back? One uh, thirty. Yeah, I guess about 1.30. Joe, can we do this in a half hour? Should be out too. This meeting is adjourned until 1.30.
Okay, we're back in session. We'll begin the official business agenda. First thing on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the August 10th meeting. Is there any corrections or additions? No. no. If not, they stand approved as read. Come on, Joe. <clears throat> Next item there, we'll come up here in about a half an hour. We just discussed the uh, third. Uh, the second item is a request from Covalent Distillery for an outdoor patio area as part of their <coughs> site. There's a, there's a drawing that you guys can come around. Um, if anybody knows that building <coughs> on Main Street, it used to be Union, Union National Bank. Oh, yeah. That building. In Mount Airy. No. no, no, Westminster Street. Westminster. Westminster. The one with the drive-through arch in the yes. middle of it. Enough money. Um, at one time, it was a taxi stand. Years ago. It used to be the bus station. It's across from the ho old hotel, on the west south side of Main Street, whatever it is. Uh, it used to be City Garage before you all were born. Yep. I remember it. That's why I said before you all were born. <laughs> So basically, there's two buildings. There's an arch that keeps them to tie them together, but it's an open driveway in between. Okay. The building on the left, as you face it, it's going to be the distillery side. The building on the right, it's going to be the, the tasting side. They want to put an outdoor seating area in front of the building on the right and along that driveway that goes in the middle. Are they in operation right now? No. Uh, November 10th is when they're supposed to open up. But we have approved a license. Okay. Do they look like they're going to be on t on track as far as November 10th? Yes. No. Yes. Yes. I'll, I'll go with the. Um, she's been kind of holding back on the date because it keeps on being pushed back. But now she finally actually published it as out in the. So, she's going to do her best to be open November 10th. I think I recognize that. <laughs> oh, <yeah. clears throat> And this building sit back probably 20 feet from the sidewalk, so there is a good amount of room for that outdoor seating area. Yeah. Parking in the back. Yep. That looks good to me from what I can see. Yeah, I don't have any problem with that. Okay. Uh, we already discussed Pleasant Valley. Request from Jerry Stanball about the, yes, about the addition of a tent to use going. for catered events. Um, so Jerry Stanball is who? <clears throat> He's going to be pulling up another building up. In that, there should be a drawing. Union Bridge. Um, but he wants to put a, temp, a tent up temporarily until the building gets approved, and and I think we're going to finally see the uh, the other additional restrooms. All right. So, so I don't know who Jerry Stamball is. Let's zoom through. Let's right zoom. Okay. All right. That's that's what I need to know. Let's, sorry. I couldn't think of it the first time. That's why I said Union Bridge. <clears throat> yeah. So he, well, he has a he has a building already. Yes, and he's had. Oh, so he's expanding. And then he's expanded again. He had a tent up, and then he took the tent down, and he put a, put a building up to expand on the building. And then now he's doing another tent to eventually ex put a permanent structure where the tent is. Okay. <clears throat> so the t the tent he wants is the twenty by forty foot. Yes. Right? Okay. I still can't believe that he gets anything permanent where it's at. He does a big business down there. That's not the point. It's in a flood zone. He does do a big business. Flood zones is, is in a flood zone. Oh, I've been there. Yeah. I just didn't know Jerry's last name. <coughs> any objection? <coughs> no, I don't have any. Request for a one-day liquor license from McDaniel College Alumni Association for outdoor events on October 1 at Gill Stadium, November 5th at Gill Stadium, and November 6th at Ingler Porch. Where is Ingler Porch? All right, McDaniel Campus Safety, where is Ingler Porch? I believe it's down there in the Decker Center. All right. I Where's the Decker Center? That's the main. That's the main building where the admin is. If I was to a, a memorial service up there a month or so ago, Baker Chapel. You familiar with Baker Chapel? Yep. I went in off of Pennsylvania Avenue <coughs> to get 
close to the chapel, and there was a, a building with a, a large tent thing, approximately the same distance from Pennsylvania Avenue and Main Street on the campus there, but a, twice as far from here to the end of the building from Baker Chapel. I'm guessing that's where it is. Here's the porch. It might be the one that's out in front of the president's dining, dining hall. This is the well, porch. I don't know where that's at. But okay, the, it's but off. It, it's, okay. Yeah, I, I have an idea where it is at. But Tina's right. getting it. That's the porch. Looks like it's in the Angler Dining Hall. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's it. That's, that's it. it. That's it. Yeah, it's just that's off the it. It's just yeah. off the cook house. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Any objection? Mm -mm. No. I assume it's homecoming or something special with the it's football field for those two items. Okay, request of attorney for John Sierra Sr. that Raphael's be allowed to participate in the Oyster Stroll on October 8th to be able to serve alcohol outdoors. We well, just found out that Mr. Sierra Sr. has passed away. Mm. They'll be submitting an application for a new licensee. Now, as soon as we get done that, before we move to the next one, While George is looking at, what kind of correspondence do you have in regards to the licensee of Buds at Silver Run? <coughs> we gave, gave them an extension, and that was 30-some days ago. Yeah, the last I heard, they're finally working with an attorney to try and get it straightened out. But they do not have it straightened out yet, apparently. So, uh, the, the discussion, do we need to take formal action to put them on notice or something since we already gave them an extension and nothing happened I think we should follow up on it if we, if we gave them the extension and they didn't <coughs> meet the extension has their attorney been in contact with you Joe the attorney has well, and then I, I think that at the very least we should uh, require that the attorney put us on notice of his representation and what the issue is. Yeah. If, if, if they're represented. You, you want me to hand deliver a letter from the board? Yeah, that'd probably be good. Yeah, I think it'd be a good idea. If it can, yeah. <coughs> yeah. So this tent for Raphael's is on not a tent it's not a, a tent not a tent well, just to be able to participate what does that say <coughs> it does say tent he's going to put a tent yeah it's a pop-up on the street correct okay right in front so, of his so right, right in front of his business so it's going to be actually on the street because the street's now pedestrian yes right. okay yeah that was my question to joe about zoning on the sidewalk but it's not on the sidewalk it's on the state highway Any objections? Mm -mm. Joe, you'll take care of notifying buds. <coughs> Request from Mark Bailey of Mount Airy VFW to hold an outdoor event on Veterans Way by their building. Have they done this before? Yes. Any problems? No. No, I mean for Keith. Oh. No. <laughs> no. I also got a last minute request from them um, that they would like to participate in the Oktoberfest by being able to sell liquor inside the post and people being able to carry their drinks outside on the closed Main Street. And I just got off the phone before lunch with the council member, councilwoman we got the one day liquor license for and they, the town does not want them to participate and allow people to come out of their establishment with alcohol. Who doesn't want them to participate? The town. The, the town? City, the town of Mount Airy. Okay. When they is, don't want the BFW to participate. Okay. They've had issues with them? No, her, 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 her name's on the liquor license and she, <clears throat> she, can't, she can't verify that they card everybody correctly and what they, what they walk out with 
So she's asking the board to say no, the town does not want them to participate, allow the alcohol to come out there. How is she asking us? What? Has she put it in writing? No, she, she <laughs> called me, she called me on a, a text meeting and I called her back and talked to her on the phone. All right, let's get one thing clear started. Okay. Is this the same request? Because there's no date mentioned here. All it says is an event on Veterans Way for the building. No, that's that's a different. That's a different. All right, request. that's different request. Let's right. settle this one first. It's like it's September 25th. I thought it was on the email somewhere. It says um, hi, Joe. R E September 25th picnic. <coughs> So, so who's um so this got nothing to do with the councilwoman this this event okay so mark bailey is on the license at the vfw okay right. and that one they've done before that one they've done before right. the council has not she's not saying anything about so we can approve that one right yes any objections to that one? no no all right now the second one Joe, what's the request of the second? Um, it's for this Saturday, September 24th, the Main Street in Mount Airy will be closed for Oktoberfest. The DFW would like to sell liquor inside the post and people be able to carry their drinks outside onto closed Main Street. All right, now, this councilwoman is on a one-day liquor license for the town of Mount Airy. Correct. Pamela, Pamela Reed is the name on there. Okay. October 1st, that we approved last month, but correct? That license, that license would not have any effect <coughs> on the VFW's license. And the VFW's license would govern their participation by taking drinks out. That would be Bailey on the, on the VFW license. Right, but the, but the, just like we just talked about Raphael's, Raphael's is asking to do an outdoor, and the, the city of Westminster has said okay to Raphael's. Right. <clears throat> so the town of Mount Airy is saying no, they, don't, they don't, do not wish <clears throat> to have the VFW. You only have that by a council person, not officially by the town of Mount Airy. But I have it by the, I have it by the, the licensee on the one day liquor license. That's immaterial. Okay, I can. Are they closing down Main Street? Yes. Okay, so we've already approved Oktoberfest because there was something we approved and Main Street was not closed down. Right. And, 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 and we had a concern about that. Remember, remember that? Uh, yeah, yeah, correct. This and is different than that, correct? This is different from that. This is Oktoberfest. We approved it last month. This is something they've done in the past. They closed down Main Street, let, let people walk. Okay. The person who has that license that we, we approved is requesting the board not, agree, not allow VFW to come onto onto Main Street with with alcohol. So she, my my point is simply this: she is a council person, but is she officially acting on behalf of the town of Mount Airy, or just because she's on that license? Yeah, there is she a made the resolution. There's a she, big difference. Okay, I can't I can't give you a hundred percent correct answer. All I can say is she's the one that did the resolution for the town. To allow this to happen, she's the one who did the one-day liquor license. I believe she's acting as a town for the town. I don't want to guarantee. I don't want to say. I might that question. I might. Well, I, I understand. I'm just saying. But she she got the resolution because the town has to have a resolution to allow them to close the main street. The town council passed a resolution that that she introduced, closing Main Street for October Fest. Correct. And. Does the mayor have to sign anything? It's just a council decision. I would think the mayor signed the resolution. Okay, I, me too. I think so too. So they, they closed the town. The council and the mayor have closed correct. the main street. Correct. Made it pedestrian, and then various licensees come to us and say, "Well, we, we want to participate. <clears throat> we want our patrons to be able to go out into the street." Correct. And that's what this VFW is doing. Correct. Uh, by uh, this last-minute request that Joe just gave us. And there's been a, a verbal co communication to you that the applicant on the license for Oktoberfest is against it. Correct. So did VFW participate in Oktoberfest last year? No. I don't remember. I don't 
So how members, does she know? Groups. How does she know how they're carding? She doesn't know. She doesn't, she doesn't know, right? And she doesn't know what they're what they're because she, as the one day as a licensee, she's over serving, and make sure everybody's tw over twenty one. She doesn't know what the v because she's not going to be in the VFW when they're carding. She's not going to be. So her people not carding, and she's concerned. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but they could be overserved. Well, that's any establishment there. And and but she's concerned about that, and she's requesting the board not allow people to leave their establishment. Well, she just doesn't want them to leave the establishment with alcohol. Or are other establishments there are able to leave? Up, no. None of them are. No, none of them are. Upper Deck is requesting it also, but they haven't. They haven't. But they're using the carrying license, which I'm going to tell them they can't. If the board tells me that VFW can't, I think as as the licensee, I don't want them to participate. I think the board should support what I, as a licensee, want. How about the pizza place there? They have a license. Lorenzo's? The Lorenzo's? No, we have not. We have not heard anything from them. They have not requested to participate. No. So the only request we have to participate on the Oktoberfest by allowing their patrons to go out onto Main Street is. VFW. VFW, yeah. and then Upper Deck, because didn't Upper uh, Upper Deck I think sent a letter, sent an email. Have last they week. made the re Has the Upper Deck made a request? Yes, I, I think do. Theirs might have been last month because it's not. Did we approve that? Not in this file. I have to see if we approved it. Last month was uh, <laughs> August, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I got uh, I got a request Thursday. <clears throat> you should receive a request also Thursday. From what upper deck? From the upper deck. Okay, so last month we did consider a request for an outdoor event of Mount Airy Main Street Association on the wine and cheese on Main Street, and that's yes. the one where they did not close down. Correct. And we had a concern about that. Um, they they changed around. They moved, did some things around and made it better. They put it all in one location. They had a one-day liquor license for an outdoor event, a block party on downtown August the 27th of 2022, which we approved. Yeah, I may have missed it, but I don't have anything for And that. they're closing the road for that. The only two that appeared last month. Did we approve Oktoberfest? I didn't find it. No, it's not, oh. not last month. You mean for Mount Airy? Yeah. May have been the month before. It could have, see what Mount Airy does with what you usually do is they submit several at a time. So it could be back, it could be back a while, a ways back too. All right, so I'm looking at, at the July agenda. Nothing on there. I don't see anything about Oktoberfest for Mount Airy. I see, uh, uh, yeah, that's just, a, that's just City Spirits Mount Airy. Nothing in June. Nothing in June? No. Can we table, if we table it, I can, we can go upstairs and look on the computer and tell us when. Hey, we approved a request from Pamela Reed representing the town of Mary, Mount Airy for two one day liquor license for events. Event Ava's T21 Foundations on June the 4th. September the 24th, Mount Airy Oktoberfest. There it is. So there's where we approve the Oktoberfest. <clears throat> Two different events. One is a fundraiser. The other was for the town. Right. Right. Okay. So if I'm understanding right, if you tell the VFW they can't do it, then you'll have to tell Upper Deck that they <coughs> also can't do that, it. That is what I'm, I'm, that's with board approval, that's what I like to do, tell both of them they cannot participate. The town does not Well, who's going to sell the liquor? The town has people, and I think it's just, it, I'm not sure if it's beer and wine or. They have vendors. Yeah, the vendors will the be. allowing vendors to take over certain areas. And those are going to be outside. So right. they don't want any competition, what you're saying. <laughs> Sounds like it. What it bounced to. I'll be correct. I don't. 
That's I, probably what it is. I, feel, I don't I, care one way or the other. I'm just saying. It's, it's, I kind of feel better to have to have a, a request of the councilwoman in writing. Okay. Um, an email expressing her reservations for the, just so we have a record. Okay. I can have that. I can. I can have that. Well, I mean, that's just my thought. Yeah. Uh, how the rest of the board feel I, about that? Hey, please. my thought is it should, should be in writing and should be if if in fact this is a town event it should be official notice from the town right of mount Airy, not right. just an individual if she's if if she's authorized to do that that's fine well she okay. doesn't know about the upper deck then no no she knows about the upper deck she told me about the upper deck but the up, up, upper but deck was okay with her no the upper deck doesn't have to request because they have a catering license I have an email from the upper deck Thursday asking them because they have to give us seven days with a catering license. So they, their rules are a little bit different from VFW. Okay. The catering license allows them to do that. But with the catering license, you need to have permission from the place you're going to set up. You can't just go to someone's house and start selling alcohol. So do they have permission from that, that place to set up? No, the town's gave, it said no to. Okay, so they didn't give Upper Deck permission to set up then. No. Okay. But she's Pamela Reed's in, in discussion with Upper Deck Jamie, saying Jamie says, "Well, we we can. We have a catering license. No, they need to have permission from that location to do a catering event." Okay. You know, they can't just show up at someone's park a parking lot and start selling alcohol. Upper Deck has a catering license. Correct. They have a parking lot. They have a t they use a town parking lot. Oh, the oh, it's not their parking lot. It's the town. <coughs> parking lot. Not okay. their parking lot. Uh, so the town. Well, I don't believe it's their parking lot. I know there's a three or four businesses that use that parking lot, so I, I think it's a town parking. But I, not knowing Mount Airy that well, I can't I can't give right, it. Right. It may or may not be a distinction. I'm just I'm just putting it out there. Um, right. I just have cons I just think if the if the licensee doesn't want it I don't think we should let me ask you this has the upper deck ever requested us or applied to us uh, to sell to go alcoholic beverages yes they did so and we approved it so they have an application I mean they they have our approval to sell to go correct I think my problem I have with uh, this is it a councilwoman that's yes. asking this I think my problem with the councilwoman's uh, is her excuse for them not being able to, uh, not carding correctly and over serving. Where is the proof for that? Her, her, her I mean, that's it's just not, her not saying they do it. She's not saying, but she's concerned that she has no control over it. Oh. It's her name on the license. She doesn't have control over what they're serving, who they're serving, and <clears throat> well, then she doesn't want anyone to be able to do it, based on that argument. Yeah, she, she doesn't want anybody, any outside. Oh, but she has control over the vendors that they're going to bring in? Yes. Okay. Because it's her license. She has control of the vendors. Uh, all the vendors are using her license. Yes. Now, West City of Westminster does it a little different. They allow City Spirits, 84 East Main, Raphael's, Johansson's, O'Lorian's. They allow them to do, to, to do that with board permission. Okay. So we've given them permission. Correct. But you can also, I, I believe you can also say no to that, too. Just has to be across the board right? Uh, for conformity. Yeah. Each town across the board. Each town. I mean, and she's not, she's not being selective. She's not saying, you know, Lorenzo can do it. She's saying she doesn't want anybody to do it. Right. So it sounds to me like it's more she doesn't want any competition. Nice. Pro yes, probably. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to get. I, I thought if the town if the town says they don't want it, I thought the board would go along with that. Well, <clears throat> I think that's persuasive. Yeah. If it's in writing from the town. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Signed by the mayor. Signed by who you want to sign by. <laughs> I'd like it signed by the mayor. It could be signed by any person who has the authority to do it, to act on behalf of the town. Well, I think she does because she got the license. Well, but she has to say that. She says, on behalf of the town of Mount Airy, right. okay. I am requesting. All right. 
I have two days to get it. If she gets this to us by tomorrow or Friday. You got an email. Right, and, and I'll probably get it this afternoon. The board is gonna say, with that information, we'll say no. I would say, um, I would go with take, take it to Dave. Take, take, <laughs> to, take it to Dave. Take it to the chairman and see if it meets the, our criteria. Okay. Let me, all right. Okay, I would I mean, have, I, I'll I, have a letter. Hopefully I can have a letter before the board is over at two o'clock. Hopefully we can have it soon. Or we can do that, but, but, but in, in lieu of all of us reviewing it, you know, okay. the, yeah. the, the chairman can, can make the decision. That's my thought. All right, we, we got that dead horse? Yeah. All right, let's move on. We got a request from Susan Nardis of Rock Salt to participate in the oyster stroll. Any objections? No. no. Request from uh, Brian Zuber of Stratosphere to host a one-day outdoor event on October 8th for an Oktoberfest event. You all know where Stratosphere is, mm -hmm. where they throw axes inside. <laughs> they're, they, you have approved their outdoor seating. They're going to actually expand a little bit bigger than their actual outdoor seating area. So the Oktoberfest event will be on that little patio in front of Stratosphere? Yeah, and some of the grass, too. And, and, and you've talked to them about, <clears throat> about our concerns about barricades, yeah, yeah. someone out there, staffing, all that stuff, yes. Okay. Right. This is the, and this is a new event. Will you be there? If the board tells me, yes, I will be. I think, I think it's doing, actually doing it. I think one of you ought to go. Yep, well, one of us would go. It's the eighth. Approval of outdoor events and fundraisers by Tony Town VFW, to and there's Wait, a list attached to their request. Um, just, uh, I'm sorry, to get back to something on this letter, Stratosphere is requesting that the other tenants of the building be notified of the upcoming event. We have done our due diligence to inform them as well. However, we do not have all necessary contact information. Are they asking us to? No, I, okay. I think he he notified them. He just doesn't. He's basically saying that he tried to notify everybody. He doesn't. Okay, it was just there's a letter addressed to yeah. us. I thought, but that's why that talking to him. I didn't read. I didn't actually read what he wrote. But talking to him, he was going to notify everybody. Okay, it's a October eighth is a Saturday. Yeah, they always do a good job there, I think. Yes. I might. No outdoor axe throwing. <laughs> Straighten that up. Tawny Towns events. September 24th for a drawing. October 1st for a crab feast. October the 15th, Family Fun Day at the Post Pavilion. 250 Club on October 21st, another oyster feed on the 29th, a Christmas party on December the 4th. Any comments you all like to make? Other than they've done it in the past, probably, most right. of the time. Right, I mean, Joe did send out emails to all the clubs about expanding their outdoor area, adding their outdoor area too, so we don't have to go through approval. No one's responded back to us. So we are going to be directing more attention to try to get them to just submit a plan for outdoor areas. But I have no problem with. So there's no plan with, with this request? Yeah, they have a parking lot out, out front that they use. Any objection? No, I have no objection. I have no Request from the Green Turtle, <coughs> excuse me, the Green Turtle here in Westminster for a parking lot permit on Sundays, October 16th, to have a car show and cornhole tournament. I assume that request is to expand to the parking lot to be able to serve yes. alcohol out okay. there. There's map there. It is. There's two. There's a map. The big box is for the car show. The small box is for the cornhole. I'm, yeah. I'm familiar. They have fencing and with things like that too. They will. Any objections? No. Well, I, I just have a question. The, uh, the car show is it's a very big area. Correct. And, but that's going to be segregated from the, every place else with a fence? Mm-hmm. There's no fencing they have. 
Okay. I have no objection. Request from 84 East Wood Fire Kitchen to participate in the October 8th Worcester Stroll. Any objections? No. Another request from 84 East Wood Fire Kitchen to be able to not open until 4 p.m. Tuesdays and Wednesdays until they can find more employees. I don't think they'd be making that request unless it was necessary. Yeah, I so agree. I, I have no problem with it. Now, I don't know about this next request. It says, letter from Kelly Schaefer Miller Esquire about the proposed legislation for a special license for the Carroll County Arts Council. Can we postpone that till we go through the rules and regulations? Yes, that's what that was intended for. That's, yes, thank you. Mr. Benford, Retailers Training Seminar in June 2023. Yes, we look at two dates, June 1st or June 8th. What days of the week are those? Thursdays. Yeah, that's fine. I was going to hopefully get, yeah, I thought you said Thursday. <laughs> yeah. First, June 1st and June 8th? Yes. We had to pick a date. You'll see on that form, there's a form that's floating there. That's what the form everybody's going to have to fill out to register for the event. And where's the event now? Carroll Community College. Oh, good. What time's the start? 9 o'clock. It'll be over by 12 o'clock. Hopefully. Well, unless you, you know. Just looking at the top of this. Yes. Rings a bell with our discussion earlier about continuing education. This is not technically a continuing education course, which did you assume <clears throat> go through all that with all this full registration for? I agree it's not continuing education, but they get money for every student that they register and have trainings even though it's from outside teachers, they can still consider continuing education and training. Who's doing it's, the registration? They are or we are? Both. There will be three ways. They can, they can go online. There will be a link to go online fill this form out. They can call in to the college and fill this form out. Or they can call Joe and for, okay. fill this form out. So really the thing that's changed the most is that they're not requesting social security number, which was a, a problem that some licensees had. Is that right? Yeah, and I got rid of the original one. I got rid of the credit card information at the bottom. Good. And I'll tweak it with the date. I'm going to try to fill as much stuff as, as possible on the form, the date, the time, all that stuff. Well, on the form I have, it says uh, if paying with a credit card, register online. Do our licensees have to pay to, to go to the seminar? No, that, that, that line should have been taken off. It says free. Where it says cost, it says free. Okay, yes, I see. Now, there is no cost for the, for the training. Um, the college will charge us a fee to host it and do the registration and do the setup and tear down. And then if we get food through, whoever we get food through, the, we might have to pay for college for the food. I'm sorry, whoever what? The food. If we get co f the food, like the continental breakfast we do, oh, oh. they provide, the, we have to pay for the food. But I just need to know what date that we want to pick. You want the first Thursday or the second Thursday? My suggestion is do the first Thursday in case weather and then we could always do it the second thursday yeah that's a good idea okay. um, it's actually open to the 15th too but that's a day after a hearing and i don't want to tax us too much i don't want to see you no well, it's in june you're not gonna have anything but rain maybe if you have any yeah I mean, right i was gonna say you think it's gonna snow in june <laughs> <laughs> well we can have torrentials down for us they close the schools down for one day for, because of rain so it's so happened we, in the past it could have flooding it could have flooding I was a day school bus. Yes, I mean. School buses might not operate. If that college floods, I don't want to be around here. <laughs> but the roads for people to get to the college. Yeah, the, the college is closed, the, the uh, students are out, and public schools are still in. So I think it's a good week to do it in between those two. So, so we're in agreement up here, June the 1st. Yeah. June the 1st, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. 
Joe, is there any other business to be brought before this group before we go back up to the top? Yep. Can I add something? Yes, you may. Uh, I was told by Mr. Burke that uh, any proposed legislation that the Liquor Board has needs to get to the commissioners by November. Well, hopefully, after we have a hearing this afternoon, uh, we will be able to forward that next month after we take an official vote. Am I correct on that? So that would give certain parties upstairs two weeks to get it to the <coughs> by the 1st of November. Is that sufficient time? By November. <laughs> so, so Tim sent, sent out some proposed, or, 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 or no, we're it proposing legislation to Yes, yeah, but I thought I thought that Tim had a uh, a summary of our of what we were proposing. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. what he does. he does. Okay, so I'm just so next month you'll just say yes. Confirming we'll go forward mm -hmm. with what this. we discuss here later today, whether we're going to move forward with it or not. Right. But the official vote will not be until right. next month. Right? Mm -hmm. Anything else? Any other comments? Anybody has just saying or so on and so forth. I think there's some highlights. If not, there. all right. Ladies and gentlemen, that word. welcome. Uh, as a preference to our next agenda item, which is a public hearing for the proposed rules and regulation changes that uh, we have as a <coughs> licensing board discussed, along with uh, some suggestions, recommendations, and comments by members of the public and members of those establishments that are involved with this. Um, we have before us the new wording and the previous wording. Now, in the essence of time, unless you all have some objections, there are certain things in this thing that are required by previous legal decisions that uh, we have to change in our rules and regulations which by law uh, no longer apply. So they will be deleted and there will be some other situations where <laughs> wording has been changed simply uh, to simplify things. So I have before me the sections that are to be changed and so on and so forth. And beginning on the first page of the changes, on page two, simply, I'm not going to read this whole thing because it, it really is immaterial. All it does is add to alcohol and t tobacco tax the word commission. <coughs> and their new phone number. And of course, the date, if these changes are accepted, will be uh, revised and adopted as of October or whatever the date is. Now, the main, main change on the first page is under Rule 6, number 1, which includes outdoor seating to a drawing which is submitted uh, by the licensee by the, for the applications and so forth. And, and as most of you are aware, we now have many requests for outdoor seating and so on and so forth. And we simply uh, uh, inserted the, the word outdoor seating to be included on that. On the next page of the changes under Rule 6.2a, according to law, we have to eliminate where it says a registered voter and taxpayer is eliminated and it simply says resident of Carroll County when the application is filed. Eliminated and struck is and shall have resided in Carroll County at least two years prior to the ap application. Further down in the next one we have to delete again registered voter and taxpayer. now says resident of Carroll County when the application is filed and shall reside in Carroll County during the entire tenure as resident licensee. Struck from that rule is shall have resided in Carroll County at least two years prior to the application. As we go through these pages, if there is questions or discussion 
in the essence of time, please don't hesitate to stop. Okay? All right, on the next page under Rule 6 2B, halfway through again, we have to eliminate registered voter and taxpayer and eliminate and shall also have resided in Carroll County at least two years before the application. And again, down at the bottom of the page, registered voter and taxpayer resident simply says now that you shall be a resident of Carroll County. When the application is filed and shall reside in Carroll County, during their NTAR tenure as a resident licensee and eliminated and shall also have resided in Carroll County at least two years before the application. Yeah, there's a question. Got a question on it. It's about, they ask you now or? About that? Yes, now. I just want to know, is that part, and I'm not trying to beat this dead, but isn't that part of the Maryland Code, this, this, this section? So don't you have to change the Maryland Code too? No, I don't think that's part of the Maryland Code. That's part of our rules. It's yeah, part of the rules, but it's also part of the Maryland Code. Well, the Maryland sure. Code was changed in response yeah. to the Tennessee case. Right. And so so we're, we're bouncing that off of the, the change. The Maryland Code's already been changed? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's good. That's all I wanted to know. Okay, and under Rule 6AE and E1, all the way at the bottom of the page. Miss Kelly, what's that word? <laughs> Pecuniarily. We have changed that particular word most everywhere as you will find it in these rules to simply be financial. So instead of pecuniary, interest, it will now say financial interest. On the next page, on the right hand side, halfway through, same change. That's changed from that to financial interest. The next page under Rule 10D. Transfer of the management responsibility and slash or of any economic benefit associated with the establishment in question may not be made prior to the board's final approval of the transfer. However, strike the word after and insert before a transfer, a prospective transferee may work for salary only under the existing licensee or licensees for a period added to be determined by the board, provided that the board approves the arrangement in advance. Under 12, at the bottom of the page on the right, all license holders shall maintain on the license premises a record containing the names, addresses, phone numbers, strike ages, and include birth dates of all persons employed by them on the premises. Moving on to the next page, under B at the top to the right. All state and local taxes shall be paid before the license is renewed. Added wording, all state and local taxes must be paid by April the 20th of the renewal year or a fine of $50 per day will be incurred until the tax payments are satisfied. Rule 15H, next. Second sentence, failure to obtain the license from the board by May 1st shall result in strike revocation and add suspension of the license unless the establishment is temporarily closed in accordance with Rule 11. Added and will result in a revocation hearing to be held at the next liquor board's hearing date. Can I make a suggestion? We get rid of the word ratification. Just make it a hearing, because that way you can suspend it, you could revoke it, you could do whatever you need to do. Fine it if you want. It's my understanding 
the reason for this change for revocation is because if a revocation occurs, it has severe consequences for both the licensee and the location of the establishment. And we felt to insert the word suspension until this board could have a revocation hearing to be held <coughs> to determine whether that is or not. So I, I, I talked to Keith about this. I, I understand what Keith is saying. It kind of sounds like uh, when you call something a revocation hearing, that means that it's a hearing on whether there'll be a revocation. But I think a for the board's purposes, a revocation hearing can include any type of remedy that, that we wish to assert. Although, what Keith is saying, I understand. Uh, you know, it sounds like it might be a hearing just for the revocation, uh, and that, that might limit our options. So, what Keith was thinking is that just a compliance hearing or a violation hearing or something like that, other than revocation, might be clearer to a licensee reading this language. Um, I'm agnostic about the issue. I would I would defer to Tim Dixon too and see what. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're we seem to know what the issues are. Uh, um. Okay, attorneys. There's three of you. Maybe more. I don't know. Have an interest in this one, but I'll say violation hearing I think seems clear because then if you wanted to fine, if you wanted to, you know, it would be in keeping with any of your other violation hearings where you could still revoke, but you could also do other things, and it would be more clear that there right. could be potential other outcomes than revocation from that hearing. Yeah, I, I agree with Kelly on yeah, that. Yeah, that's a good idea. So we're suggesting uh, we're letting the wording in except changing revocation to violation. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's good. Okay. So make that one by one. Correction or addition, whatever. <coughs> and at the bottom of the page under Rule 16, multiple places, we're changing that word again to financial. And at the top of the next page, uh, we're striking that and changing to financial interest. However, To go on with that, financial interest is defined as ownership of at least 10% of the outstanding common stock of a corporation with voting rights. This is being added. Common stock of a corporation with voting rights or holding at least a 10% interest in a limited liability company with voting rights for which actual consideration paid is at least 5000 Strike LLC, which is entitled to vote in any stockholders meeting for which actual consideration <coughs> paid is at least $5,000. Skip down to number one on the same page. Qualifying resident applicant is defined as the applicant who is a Carroll County resident. Strike and has been a so for at least two years immediately preceding add at the time of filing of the application. Here again, we strike pecuniary and put financial interest. Continuing on with number two, financial interest requirements shall be deemed met if the actual consideration for the corporate or, this is being added, for the corporate or interest in a limited liability company exceeds 5,000, regardless of whether the stock or interest own amounts to 10% of the outstanding stock or interests. That is being added. Strike. And there is a typo there. Yeah, it's 105. It's yes, 105. 105. I got percent. that marked here. Yeah. And I was going to, I can understand you hit the five instead of the top. <laughs> okay, and strikes at the bottom of the page. Stock exceeds $5,000. The top of the next page, regardless of whether the stock owned amounts to 10% of the outstanding common stock. Under three. So can we discuss that for one second? Yes. Uh, it feels like 
A requires 10% interest for which actual consideration paid is at least 5,000. <clears> and then further down, 16A2 um, says that the ownership interest, regardless of whether the stock or interest owned, amounts to 10% of the interest, I mean, the outstanding stock or interest, as long as $5,000 is paid. It struck me as uh, contradictory language. Um, uh, if I was a layman, I would think it was contradictory. Um, so it seems like you're saying, not you, but it seems like we're saying, on one hand, 10% and $5,000, <coughs> actual consideration is required to have a financial interest. And then later we're saying, well, uh, $5,000, uh, irregardless of whether it's 10% of the stock or not. That's the way I take it. I read that. Yeah, so the whole reason we looked at this to begin with was that the old rule did not make a distinction between uh, Maryland Corporation and the Maryland Limited Liability Corporation. One issues stock generally and one generally does not. But the old rule referred to percentages of stock. So to be clear, we, we, uh, we suggested this language. But then, uh, as I was looking at it, it just seemed like one was contradicting the other. Um, if you pay $5,000, it doesn't matter what the percentage is of ownership interests. Right. Whereas before, it didn't matter. This is all, in, this is all in Rule 16. What do you mean before it did matter? It was 5000 or 10%? Um, well, Financial interest is defined as ownership of at least 10% of the outstanding common stock of a corporation with voting rights or holding at least a 10% interest in a limited liability company with voting rights for which actual consideration paid is at least, is, is least 5,000. So it's not saying or actual consideration is paid, it's saying for which actual consideration is paid. You'd have to pay at least 5,000. Yeah, so, so the way I'm reading that is that those are two requirements to be met. But then later down in the rule at number two, it looks like the rule was saying financial interest is deemed to met if you pay $5,000, regardless of the, of the percentage of outstanding stock. Well, why did we word it that way? Well, that's how the rule was, that's how the original rule was worded. And when I went back to change language, I, I didn't take out any of the rules. I just, I just made the distinction between uh, corporate and limited liability company and then leave it up to the board to decide whether, uh, whether that's a contradiction or not in the rule. I was reading it that way, but uh, I, didn't, I didn't want to suggest taking a rule out until there was a discussion about it. Well, what are you suggesting now? Well, we can either make it either or 10% stock in a corporation, 10% interest in a limited liability company, or $5,000. So that, that's an either or scenario. Because right now it's, the rule says both. Isn't that how our original rule state, was stated? Well, the. Um, 10% or $5,000? I, I think in the past the board has looked at it that way, but the rule doesn't say that. Uh, I'm looking at the rule. The old rule right now says pecuniary interest is defined as ownership of at least 10% of the outstanding common stock of a corporation or LLC, which is entitled to vote at any stockholder meeting for which actual consideration paid is at least $5,000. So that's not either or. That's a both. Um, that's our old rule. Now, you know, we're, we're getting rid of pecuniary and putting financial in. But even the old rule seemed contradictory. And, uh, and I, I didn't want to <clears throat> make that choice myself without the board uh, discussing it. All right, now, you just, we just had an application 
two hours ago. The guy paid less well, than Were the 10,000, 10% 10 qualified because there was only X number of shares? Right. But it, it was only half of 5,000. Right. Yeah, we did not enforce this So you've this got to have one or the well, other. I pointed that out, but we didn't. Well, 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 well it was 10%. It, 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 right. It equaled 10%. So we applied an either or. Either or on that. That's what we did, yeah. but our rule doesn't say either or. Well, how are you going to say that in this rule? That's my point. Well, it could be, Tim will tell you, or I can tell you, it can be rewritten to no, say somebody, either or. That's what I'm getting at. Oh, you're asking for a suggestion? Yeah. Oh. Well, and do, do we agree that it's going to be either or? I certainly agree. That's okay. the way it's always been. Well, you could just change the wording to with voting rights or holding at least 10% interest in a limited liability company with voting rights or, or actual consideration paid is at least $5,000. Yeah. That's an either word right there. It's just it's a simple change. Um, But then you still have a. Then you still have to wonder about down below where it says. If you pay five thousand, it doesn't matter what percentage. Does, does that have legal effect? Then, if we change it either or. Well, if let's say you have instead of ten percent, you can have five percent interest in the company. But if you pay the five thousand, you're good. That, that's how I'm looking at it. So we can keep that in there. So if you look on page twenty-three of our original rule book. It says or. Page twenty three. We could make this real simple. If you just yeah, yeah. get all that percentage and say you got to have five grand in period. Yeah, I, I see. So yeah, so so this. So that's how we originally had it. I know, but but that conflicts with Rule 16A. Right. So we can make Rule 16A conform with Rule uh, wait a minute. How many times have we had an application where the 10% came into play versus 5,000? Very few times. So if you look at you know something, maybe this, this original thing here didn't have that yeah, order in so, it. So maybe this is wrong. Right, that's wrong. That's what I was trying to get at is that that's not written correctly. Okay. Well then, let's let's uh, just do what you say. You want to change two back to what it previously said? Well, well according to Mr. Barnhart, he, he feels that's the way it should be, the, the way that it's originally written. So originally, if you look at the rule book, at least a copy I have, 16A, all of the individuals applying for a license on behalf of a corporation or a limited liability company must have a pecuniary interest in the corporation or LLC. Pecuniary interest is defined <coughs> as ownership of at least 10% of the outstanding common stock of the corporation or LLC, which is entitled to vote at any stockholder meeting for which actual consideration is paid. No, no, I, no, I, I, I take it back. That or is not applying uh, what we're talking about. So what is on our page eight of our sheet, I, I think on the left-hand side is, is what's in our, our book. Right, but I was talking about number two. Yeah, well, the, well, that's the one that. This is the one that's basically either or, because it's regardless of whether the stock owned amounts to ten percent. <clears throat> well, I think your suggestion about where to put or in the new side mm -hmm. takes care of our problem. Um, because I'm, now I'm looking at the book again as opposed to our worksheet 
Our book does not say either or. Where are you going to put or? Um, I think Joe said financial interest is defined as ownership of at you least. You're under number two or where you're at? No, back up at the top. Back at the top of page eight. All right. Financial interest is defined as ownership comma, of at least 10% of the outstanding common stock of a corporation with voting rights or holding at least a 10% interest in limited liability company with voting rights or actual. for which actual consideration paid is at least 5,000. So financial interest could be a 10% interest, 10% stock, or actually paying 5,000. Is that how you see it, Joe? Yeah, except I took out for which. I just said okay. or actual consideration paid is at least 5,000. Yeah. That works. <coughs> We clear? Three. Yeah, have we clarified number two at the bottom? All that does, it, it basically says the same thing as number two on yeah. the left hand side, except it adds wording for limited liability company. Right, it distinguishes between a corporation and an LLC, whereas the language on the left-hand side conflates the two. Okay, so we're going to strike. Stock exceeds $5,000 and strike at the top of the page the rest of that sentence. No, I don't think so. I thought we are just adding or at the top. I'm going by what's on the page here now. Are you going to not strike those words? We wanted to strike LLC, which is entitled to vote at any stockholder meeting, for which actual consideration paid is at least five thousand dollars. You've already oh, said well, that. I'm sorry. You are no, on I'm page nine. On, I'm on number two. Yeah, I'm bottom. sorry. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I thought you meant striking out the bolded language. Oh, stock exceeds five thousand dollars. Yes, and to yeah. the top of the next page, right. we're striking the rest of that sentence. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And under number three, we're changing it to financial interest. Mm -hmm. Under B, we're changing financial. Under C, halfway down, we're eliminating a registered voter and taxpayer of Carroll County and must have resided in Carroll County for at least two years immediately preceding and adding the wording, resident of Carroll County at the time of filing of the application and shall reside in Carroll County during the entire tenure <coughs> as resident licensee. In addition, the applicant must meet the blah, blah, financial interest. Page 10, at the top, a long dissertation. Licensees who operate an establishment for the use of a corporation or LLC shall submit with their renewal application a sworn statement, this is being added, a sworn statement that shall also include the name and address of each stockholder or LLC member who owns more than 5% of the outstanding stock or holds an interest in the LLC of more than 5%. We're striking a sworn statement listing the names and addresses of each officer and director of the corporation or authorized person of the LLC. No more changes on that page 10. On page 11 at the top, we're adding. It now says including seats at bars or adding counters to accommodate 50 or more persons. We clarified, is that somewhere else in these changes that to satisfy the seating of 50? not to exceed 10 or 15 seats at the bar? I don't think that's in here in writing. That should be clarified. <clears throat> Is that wrong? 
14, you said? No, that's the footnote. Oh, that's yeah, no, we don't have the wording in there. Okay. Not to exceed, was it 10? Oh, it's 15. 15 is what? 15 is what we discussed at the last time, but that should be clarified not to exceed 15 seats at a counter. Okay. Well, on page, seven, yeah, I think it on page 17, there's a footnote. Legislation has been proposed to include a maximum of 15 oh. bar and counter seats in the 50 seat requirement. If passed, this will go into effect July 1, 2023. Oh, yeah. I, I understand that. But should it not be included in our rules? Um, I think we or were, do it, we have to wait until that legislation is passed? I think we decided we had to wait until the legislature passed it. Didn't we last time? Uh, I'm not in favor of putting a bar or putting counters in there without specifically limit, limit, limiting the number of seats that can be used at that bar. If we got to have legislation, which we do, I think it should stay the same as it is now. And if we have to change it later, we can change it later. May I make a suggestion? Sure. Perhaps you could move the footnote, you could strike or counters from the actual rule add the footnote there and then put the footnote that says this this new counter potential uh, pending the effective legislation so that if i were reading this i wouldn't assume that i could count my counter space but then when i look to that footnote i would see that maybe if the legislation changes then i would have a maximum of 15. good idea we can do that i was an english major in college sometimes stay? it comes through why don't you stay right there okay <laughs> <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Uh, real quick clarification. Um, I'm just trying to make sure I've got this correct. That if we have a 50 seat establishment, I can't have more than 15 seats at my bar? Mm -mm. No, no. That's a good Middle question. That's a good question count. <laughs> you, the law says you must have 50 seats. Oh, but not including the bar seat. Right? Not including bar, period. Mm -hmm. What we're progressing to change is that you can use up to 15 seats at the bar to reach 50. We don't, we don't want a bar that's all 50 bar seats. We don't want... <laughs> we, have, we have several establishments that that's 50 seats are pretty well crowded. No, I know. Okay, we clear? So we're going to insert that footnote. And remove the word counters. And here. remove the words counters. And it will be in the footnote. So if it changes, it changes. We it changes, it'll automatically be there. Okay, no more on that page. page well, number one, we also with the, the seats at the 20 seats at the bar, for the, isn't that for the? Class BW. Mm -hmm. You won't put the same footnote. Well, you can't say fifteen. All right. You explain to me that rule. Beer and wine <laughs> license requires twenty seats. <clears throat> But this, that's the reason I asked that. This is a general statement. So this is for a restaurant. It's, it's not distinguishing be, between beer, wine, beer, wine, liquor. Right, Rule 20? Yeah, it does. It, it's a, a, a restaurant with, be, with a Class B beer and beer, wine license must meet the following requirements and conditions. Yeah, it okay. says, you're right, it says beer or wine. Yeah, that A restaurant, it should be. Okay. <clears throat> So that's 20A. Okay, so yeah, yeah so it's a 20A is not in our worksheet, so it's it's in our book, right? 20. No, no, worksheet yeah, is here. Number one, it's number one on it's, the left it's, side. No, it's I the third line down. I think what Mr. Worksheet? Barnhart's saying is that the introductory for the restaurant is not in the worksheet. Like <coughs> the, the rule. The you got a different worksheet than I got. There's a was handed out. greater introduction to the restaurant section that he's referencing that's oh, in the rule book. It's not on the worksheet. Yeah, we have the same thing. Right? Yeah, 
I'm back on page 10. This is on page 11. We did page 10. This is page 11, the third line. Page 10. So on page 11. No, he sees that. But what Mr. Barnhart is saying is that the, the footnote here is mm -hmm. part of the bigger restaurant section in the rule book. So in the rule book, it specifies that that footnote will be applicable only to, a, and Mr. Right. Barnhart, please tell me if I'm mischaracterizing, a class B beer, wine, liquor. But you can't, it's hard to tell that from the, what they're looking at on the footnote. Right, so we're missing all of this. And, and we're kind of like jumping in, in the middle of the rule. And that's, that's, that's my question. So what Keith was saying, we're on page 11 now, not page mm -hmm. 10. Right, I know, but, but page 11 starts on page 10. Right. Rule, rule 20. So that's, that's why I was referencing page 10, is that we're, we're missing the uh, part of the rule uh, to know which this is referring to. And, and the rule says restaurant. But the third line on page 11, that should be, I should have made that. So, so that, a, right. a, a different paragraph or something? Yeah. That yeah. a restaurant with a class B beer or beer and wine license must meet the following requirements and conditions. And that's where you get to the mm -hmm. okay. 20 seats. But if you're going to allow some bar seats for them, no. you, you're not. Okay. The only, I, the only bar seats that was sure. discussed was for the 50, 50 seats. Seat. Okay. If they're going to have a beer and wine license, they ought to have seats for 20 people, okay. which is five tables. So I'm going to remove that footnote, that footnote yeah. to hopefully stop the confusion. Okay, if we're clear on that, the last thing is that under that two, the hours of Sunday sales are being changed from 8 a.m. and 11 p.m. to 8 a.m. and 1 a.m. We all clear on 11. Mm -hmm. Page 12. Is it going to be for on and off? You're going to allow off sales at 1 a.m.? This is for a six day license, Pete. Yeah. All the others have to stop at 11. I'm not, I'm not sure. So. Well, well, doesn't the, the application cut off? I think Maryland law cuts off those, those um, take, you're talking about the takeout liquor? No, 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 no not, not, not that, not, not that? the new law. New law is the one for everybody? I mean, off the, for takeout? Wait a minute, uh, during, the, during the. Not the COVID law. Well, that's, the so COVID law says 11 a.m. Right, okay. 11 p.m., excuse me. COVID law says. But I can't remember, is there a law? I always thought it was two separate times. If, if you were class B, you had to stop to take out at, at 11. But I, you know, I'm probably out of it. Yes. Uh, anybody here? On I just need to look in the, I, need, I, don't, I don't have my yellow book. Did you say class, what did you say, what class, Pete? Class D or? Class Bs and Ds and all that, have, that are open past 11 p.m. Uh, and the original law let them sell the carry out, had to stop carry out at 11 because right. that made them equal with the package stores. Right. And, and we didn't want people running between package stores and bars at closing time, you know, or to get that. So I don't know, it's, I mean, I, I haven't really looked at it lately, but I don't remember it ever changing. Do you, anybody remember it changing? I, I, I can't remember. I, I don't remember anything. I look it up and it's yeah, not I need to change. Just make them a thing in there to carry yeah. out stops at 11. Let's put a question here. Kelly, are you looking that up? She's now? looking up. I'm going to try to. I don't, I don't think. I, I know for a fact that breweries are even more limited than any of this under their state licensing. So I know that for Class D breweries, this is not even an issue because their, their tap room hours are, I think, limited to 10 p.m. at the latest, anyhow. But I'm not, I, I can't speak to what Pete's saying, which is did this or did this not get changed for class B licenses in the state law? So I'll see if I can find it real quick. See, we, we might have changed it by mistake. We might have changed it when we went to 2 a.m. We might have got rid of that 11. Yeah. 
in my that's, we're, we're, we're that, that's pretty serious change. You got carry out going on fast 11. I don't know. I mean, that's up to you. If you want to do that's fine, you know. It might got changed when we went to 2 a.m. We right. changed all the hours. We might we might just I remember doing that. Then we change the hours in conformity with state law, though. Yeah, but I don't know if it got I don't know if it got got changed with it, and we didn't catch it, or I, I had without looking at the book, without looking at the computer to find the state law. I I can't tell you. I'm just thinking if it got changed, it probably got changed when we went to 2 a.m. All right, well, we're we'll, going to check we'll, it. We'll look it up. We'll look Just it up. look it up. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can't. I can't give it. Well, it ought to be. It ought to be even. That's all. Yeah. all right. On rule twenty-two, on page uh, twelve, right-hand side, halfway down, we're striking. A Class D beer and wine license may operate from six a.m. until midnight Monday through Saturday for a six-day license. That is being struck. To continue, the Class D beer and wine license strike seven day may operate from 8 a.m. until strike 11 a.m. and put 2 a.m. Monday through strike Sunday, add Saturday and 1 a.m. on Sundays. Any questions? That's, that's the same situation. Same right? situation, you're right. So whatever it is, it should be equal for all of them. When you say all of them. Well, all carry out. All carry out should at the same time. You don't want one place sell at the two, two, two o'clock and other places close at 11, do you? No, mm -hmm. do you? And you might, I don't know. I don't know. You, you remember Cody? I mean, you have a restaurant too. As far as I remember, the rule being is that we could sell carry out. See, the COVID law is well, a not, little bit different. Get the right. not, not not the COVID law, the, the old law. The only thing that we sell carry out wise is bottled beer or bottles of wine. Right. Under the law, and if I remember correctly, we can sell them to close. But it's always been that way. As far as I'm aware. Because honestly, most people are not coming to bars to buy no. carry out wine. It's usually the last minute. <coughs> I don't have any beer. I buy a 12 pack or a six pack to go. It's never like cases of beer or cases of wine. It's usually a bottle or a six pack. We're not making a ton of money on carry out. But we do charge a lot more for it. Because the license doesn't say it, right? The license, when we issue a license, it doesn't say it. Specifically about carry out? No. Yeah. All right, we're going to check that, right? Yep, we're looking to it. We're going to make these times uniform to what the law requires and so forth. Right. Okay, under 24 at the bottom, it says licensees must have add all patrons and off duty employees removed from the premises, and in addition, to continue, glasses, bottles, cans, and any other container that may contain or could have contained alcohol or any other type beverage cleared from the bar and tables by 15 minutes after the closing time required by 16-2007 of the Alcoholic Beverages Articles of the Annotated Code of Maryland. Everything else in that is being struck from the rule. It's simply a change uh, it's taken out non-working employees and blah, 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 this and blah, blah, that. So everybody, so on and so forth, has to conform. Under Rule 28, noise and music. Mechanical music boxes and other sound marking devices, including live performances, shall not be operated from 10 p.m. We're adding from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. and in a manner that disturbs the peace and quiet of the neighborhood. This is to conform with Carroll County law. <coughs> yes, ma'am. So you're telling me in this change that we are no longer allowed to do live performances past 10 p.m. regardless of where we are? No. I, 
Yeah, I think that's a, but that's that a common misunderstanding because I had a similar conversation with a client about that. I think it's at first glance, I think that's kind of the impression that people are getting. I Read will the say rest that. of it. In a manner that disturbs peace. I'm downtown Westminster. I'm right, I live, I'm right next to a condo association. We've always done music when we've done music. We have a lot of back that helps the music in, but we've always done music from nine to midnight. We've never had a complaint. Your but music inside? According to this, I have to start my music inside, which means I now have to start. No, it, it doesn't say, no, it doesn't say that. It has to be in, in a manner distributed in compliance with the manner distributes the peace and quality of the neighborhood. It, now, does it mean if somebody limited. makes a complaint, does it mean it's going to, you have to stop? It just, and then the city, see, and then you being in the city of Westminster, you might have your own noise, noise ordinance that the city has too. So that can be a whole other story. But up to 10 a.m., up to 10 p.m., you can play music as loud as you want. After 10 p.m., that's when they, people start, start complaining. Okay? What a, and then the county says what a reasonable person will be disturbed. So we would have a delegate check. There's no more decibel levels. Okay. Well, they get rid of all the decibel levels. So, because they didn't have them tested, they weren't trained on them, they got rid of all the decibel levels. So basically, if I come out at 10 a.m., that's the decibel level. Okay. Well, that's not what happened. 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 Well, that's not what and I'm three blocks away and I hear music, yeah, that might be a problem. If I'm next, if I'm a block away, I don't hear music, that'd be no problem. So we're, we're taking reasonable. But it's only the county sheriffs can enforce that. No, this is, this, this is, this rule I can't enforce. City can't. I can. Well, you can, but the city can't. Right, this is my rule that I can come out to your place and say, 10, 15, it's three blocks away, it's still too loud. I'm just trying to make sure this is gonna be a reasonable it's up to leveling, me. Leveling, and not that Joe's <coughs> from you know five blocks down. He's just got some bone to pick. And he'll call me. And usually, at least two people before I really seriously. Okay. And I'm gonna come to you first. If I get a complaint, I'm gonna come to you first. And say, hey, let's look about the music to see if we can turn it down after 10 a.m. Okay. 10 p.m. Keep on saying a.m. 10 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, there might, uh, I'm sorry, but there might even be a problem about playing music too loud before then. I think our rules actually talk about generally disturbing the peace of the community. Well, I can see that if we were doing outside music, but you know, interiorly, I mean. I know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just commenting on your remark that I can play as loud as I want until 10 p.m. I'm not sure that's true. That's the test of this. And, and again, like you have the city's problem is you being Westminster city or. or we, have a, we have a double whammy. Yes. <laughs> okay, rule 30D, there is no D, so that letter is being deleted. Moving on to page 14. Now we got the left side and the right side both. Yeah, we discussed that last time. The left side actually had. Joe, is this right? The left side actually had bold language in it. Yes, it was already there. Yeah, so that's that, that's just uh, bold language. So why does it have to be bold now? It doesn't. It doesn't have to be. It's, okay. If you look at. Uh, so on the right side, three quarters of the way down, Class D breweries. This is being added. Class D breweries. Class D licenses for breweries will be granted regardless of population numbers as long as the brewery has obtained a Class 5 state brewery license. These licenses will be designated as Class DB, and this license will allow selling their product for both on and off premises cons consumption. This is being added because that came about after the yellow book was published. Okay, next page is 15. On the top, under F, Class H, Class H license shall be issued as needed to accommodate the public, is what it says now. 
and that is being changed from E to F. There is no E. What's your state license allow? My state license allows, well, the state license allows for us to sell bottles. Our county license allows us to sell cocktails. But your state license allows you to sell bottles to go. Correct. I think, the, I think the, does it, does it say cans? I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying, I mean, it's a state, you have to find out, make sure the state license allows you to do it. When, then we could, I mean. Since it would have to do with the cocktails, they're going to come back and say, what did the county say about cocktails? It was rather helpful during COVID because we did a lot of cocktails to go. How about since COVID? Well, as soon as you told the restaurants, and bars they can't do cocktails to go we did not want to be in any kind of violation and didn't want to work in gray area so we stopped as well my thought would be your brewery's license is a state license the, yes the distillery license to make and sell bottles yes the cocktails is specifically a county by county frederick county for instance allows cocktails to go isn't there still a special license that they can get from since from the COVID? No, the, it was the story a wasn't in, in that group. Uh, it was just restaurants and clubs. Right. So they still are in that group. But it's only it's only good through July first. Well, then it wasn't. It's going to drop again in Annapolis this year. You yeah. think they're going? You think they're going to keep it going? I don't know. It has to come up, right? Because it's, it's, it's coming, coming up, whether it'll pass or not. I don't know. Wait, it's, it says Sunset. 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 I mean. But like I said, with the cocktail part being county specific, I think that it should probably be cocktails to go county specific as well. Because if, if the state says, yeah, you can do cocktails to go, but the county says it can't be cocktails, cocktails to go is not good. That's another great. So Scott, are you saying that you have a county license or a county permit? County permit. It's a permit. It's a permit. I have a county permit. Okay, so it's a county permit to sell product to go. We sell cotton, no. No, no, to sell mixed cotton. I, I know, I, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get him to say it. So I, I know you can sell bottles to go. I understand that. But you're, you're saying cocktails in a can is what you're, you're referring to. And, and, and that was based on the emergency law that during? During COVID, yeah. Okay. So, so it, your distillery started doing cocktails to go in cans. Yes. We, I prefer canned cocktail, not cocktail to go. Because cocktail to go sounds like Pete's nightmare. Right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Bottles covered with a straw. Yeah. Right. So. We actually came by and looked at what we were doing. And the comment was, I wish everybody did that. Right. So you're saying that. There isn't any law you can point to that allows you to continue to do that. At the same time, there's no law that says I can't. But I'd rather have a law that says I can because I don't want to okay, I got you. be in trouble. I got it. Okay. But you're still making cocktails in a can for consumption in no, your sir. in your there's establishment. All cocktails are in glasses. So you can see oh, okay. Enjoy them on site. Okay. I mean, I, I would be for it, but I still want to talk to I want to talk to Lou Berman at the state. Just to verify, you have to, you have to see what's going on in Naples. That's right. part of that package. Well, but I don't think it was 
So it wasn't a COVID law, or was this before COVID? To do cocktails to, well, no, 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 you're correct. For us to do cocktails, the way they did it, they put it on the counties. They said that the counties are now able to make a uh, This was the emer permit. This was, was the emergency law. No, 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 no. The permit no. to do alcoholic cocktails was not an emergency law. It, to go? It went into effect last no. year, and it went through maybe two years ago. It came into effect in October, and then we shut down in no. Okay, so you're talking about having cocktails in your establishment. That's when. That, that was the the county allows you to do that. Yes, the county allows yes. me to do cocktails. In right, and what you're talking about now is to go, in a can. In a can, right? In yes. a can. Okay, that's what I'm saying, and that is based on the emergency law. No, this was based. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, that's when they when Governor Hogan said restaurants and bars can do cocktails to go. You're right. It's so you're not part of that merge legislation. It does not affect you. So you're. You got a county permit to said you can do cocktails at your restaurant. I mean, at, at the story. Correct. You want to now not co not COVID related. Correct. You want to sell cans of cocktails yeah. to go. Yes. That's a county. You're saying it's a county law that we need to change. Well, modify. Modify. Because I don't want to. Yeah. You know, we want to add on-site and off-site consumption. It's not a COVID because he's not part of the COVID emergency. Group. But he can sell a bottle. But that's not part of the COVID. But that's not. He has nothing to do with COVID. I understand. But irregardless, we're looking at the distinction between cans and bottles. Correct. Well, no, mixed drinks Correct. and bottles. Right. Is what we're looking at a distinction. We issued a permit, a county permit, that allowed him to do mixed drinks. Right. Yeah. Okay. He can always sell bottles through the state. We don't regulate with the bottles he sells. Okay. You can always do that through the state license. Okay, the county license allows him to make mixed drinks at his establishment. Right. Yeah. What he wants to do is take those mixed drinks, put them in cans, and sell them to go. So, do we have the authority to to do that? How can this? He said we do. I want to talk to Lou Berman. Yes. But I think we should add add the wording off site. I would be for that if Berman, if Lou Berman. Right. I need to find out for the state, just not, not against you, Scott. I just want yeah, yeah, no, I, I, to make sure we can do it. Because it's up to the counties when it comes to the mixed drinks for the distilleries. I'd have no problem with that. Does that make sense? Yeah, COVID, he's nothing COVID while they. So even before COVID, he could do a mixed drink in his distillery. Correct. Yeah. For okay, six months missing. before COVID. Right. Six months and then the world shut down. Right. I understand that. And the can thing you got was for the COVID. Correct. But I thought the COVID law didn't allow you to, to sell mixed drinks. It was only for uh, restaurants to go. I'm pretty sure it included distillers. No. Okay. No. It's only restaurants and clubs. It's only for restaurants and clubs. We talked because we talked about trying to get you in part of that COVID and it was told we couldn't. Okay. Yes, I'd love to see carry outs and cans. That'd be great at restaurants and all that, but it's a $40,000 machine. It's expensive. <laughs> yeah. He's already got the machine. I know, but I'm saying it'd be nice to have all the restaurants that do carry out cocktails to go to put them, be put in the cans. But no one's going to put that money out. But that's another issue. Um, that's, um, I would check with Lou Berman if he says that we have the authority to do that. I mean, I would be for that. Okay. So we're going to check with the estate license to see whether that permits it or what has to be done. Oh, thank you. Okay, under Rule 36. Identification, one of which must be a bona fide driver's license or an official state of Maryland. Maryland is being struck. Must be a official state ID card, valid passport, blah, blah, blah. Question was asked, uh, suppose I have a Delaware license. According to your rules, that doesn't apply to Maryland, but it does. So we're going to clarify that, okay? Page 16, top of the page, 
at the bottom of the first section. All state, and this is being added, all state and local taxes must be paid by April 20th of the renewal year where a fine of $50 per day will be incurred <coughs> until the tax payments are satisfied. Under Rule 49, Class C, Special and Temporary. Being added at the bottom, only nonprofit organizations may apply for special and temporary license. <coughs> now this next one, Rule 52, display of license is very important to some people. Provisions of the Alcoholic Beverages Articles of the Annotated Code of Maryland shall frame the license strike under glass. There'll be no pheasant under glass. And place the license so that it shall at all times be conspicuous and easily read in the place of business. Specialty permits must also be framed and on display and one day license must be displayed. Now, where is the town of, Mary, uh, town of Mount Airy going to display that one-day license for that Oktoberfest? In the where, center where of the they, Where they check IDs and <laughs> issue wristbands. <clears throat> and do you check when you go there? Do you check where the licenses are? It's supposed to be displayed. It better where be. they properly have to be displayed? It just has to be displayed properly. Something, you know. Okay. Does that mean the center of the street or to one side? Doesn't matter? Whatever the board directs. Well, we took them out of glass now, so they can be. Because you can't find. <laughs> just displayed. I just want them. I just want them in something, to keep them from getting. Any questions on that for you, licensees? You don't have to put you them on the glass You can put it back on the glass. Anymore. I'm fine with that too. So, in in order not to dust them to, to oblivion, you got to put something over them so you don't dust all them figures out. Rule 57: Revocation or non-renewal of license due to non-use. If the holder of a Class A, B, B, C, or B, R license issued by the board does not open the premises for a minimum of 30 hours, adding N5 days per week, such failure to hold the premises open to the public for the minimum hours specified shall be grounds for revocation, comma, suspension, or non-renewal of a license due to a failure to accommodate the public. Can I make one brief comment on that? No. <laughs> I appreciate the board's striking of the Class D licenses. I, I just took a quick look um, yesterday at the accommodation of the public. And I, for, for your information, not making this on behalf of a specific client, the requirement to accommodate the public is specific to Class B license, restaurant, or hotel license. So for what it's worth, um, the fact that that, um, not justification, but <coughs> intent is in this rule, that's really only specific to class B's, but then this rule applies to all, all of those other classes. So I would just point that out for the board's now what are benefit. You, what are you telling me again? Well, the, at the end of this rule, the right. kind of the justification, if you will, for this rule is based on the fact that those class of license have to accommodate the public. But the actual accommodation of the public is a requirement that's only specific to class B licenses. So to the extent that we're making these our requirements stricter for businesses if the intent of this board is to be in keeping with the state and that accommodation of the public this should really only make it stricter if you will for those class of licenses being the class B restaurant and hotel licenses I mean perhaps this board still wants to have stricter hour and day requirements for others but I just wanted to point that out that in the state law that's only specific to the class B. Are you saying A is excluded? Yes. There's no accommodation of the public requirement that I found a. in the class A license. So you're saying for A and B, C and, and B, no. R? No. no. Well, the, the uh, it's, I, it's kind of open to interpretation, Tim, only because the accommodate the public requirement for restaurant is contained in the definition of restaurant. It's not contained in the class B language itself. So to the extent that the restaurant, which is B, B, C, or B, R, technically, if you read the definition, 
that's where it says the accommodate the public. So it, it could be applicable to all of the class Bs. But you said it also included H's. Yes. Well, because in the state law, it, like it's listed right under the restaurant, but yes. So nowhere you could find it including A. I did not find it in class A. I only found it in the definition for, um, for restaurant and then in the hotel specific license. Those are the only two places I found that. Now it's possible I missed a reference, but I did word search it um, for my own benefit. I just, and the only reason I did that is because as I see in the business community, changes can come about, things can happen. I mean, we all saw the impact of co that COVID had on these small businesses. To, so to the extent that we're adding an additional regulation to them, I just feel like if we don't have to, why? Why make it more difficult for them? So that's why I took a look at it. Are we allowed to be more strict than state law? There, I, I can't quote it off the top of my head, but there's a section of the state law that specifies when you can and can't be more strict than state law. Okay. I didn't look at whether this is one of those times or not, but I do know that that exists. Right. So you're saying it, we don't need Rule 57? I'm or not saying that you don't need Rule 57. What I'm saying is that there's an accommodation of the public requirement for restaurants in the state law for restaurants and hotels. To the extent that you determine that hours and days are what is required to meet that accommodation of the public, that is at your will in these rules and regulations. What I'm pointing out is that in the state law, that's not applicable to class A's. So if they didn't want to be open five days a week, why, why make them if that's more onerous on them as a business? Right. Yeah, but they have the right to set the, the hours of operation. So they're, they're well, we're making, we're making minimums. So well, that would be minimum. I mean, yeah. 30, 30 hours is not hard to meet. In right. state law, you should have the right to, I mean, you have the right to set hours, so you should have the right to set minimums. And as for the Class A, I think their public accommodation is Class A's are done by population. That is, that is defined as public accommodation. Yeah, How about if we just put a period after license? I don't know which one. Strike due to a failure to accommodate the public. Oh, you mean at the very bottom? Yeah. Mm. Um, and you got a footnote, number two there, explains what the purpose of the rule is. <clears throat> yeah, so it's more than just public accommodation. It's also to avoid speculation. I don't know if we have any speculation in Carroll County, but uh, in other counties, I bet you they do. Well, the 30 hour a week requirement has, as you know, always been one of these rules. So everybody that comes before you either complies with that or specifically needs to request you to modify that mm -hmm. because that's your rule. But what I'm saying is that in adding the five day requirement, that's increasing a burden on these businesses. So I'm just saying, pointing out that to the extent that that's not the intent, I would encourage you to look at that so perhaps um, it would be better just 30 hours and not the five day requirement. yeah i mean from a business owner's perspective i don't see why not if they're already aware that they have to meet that requirement right. that's an hour requirement uh, why at if they want to break it up into different days why not let them right because i think if you're a restaurant you should be open for five days or at least five days i mean part of combination of the public is I, if i want to go to a restaurant they should be open yeah. I think five days is not asking too much. See, it still gives them Mondays your, and I Tuesdays. Your, I see your point. But also the marketplace would determine would that. Take care of that. Uh, that, that the marketplace would, would determine whether the public is being accommodated by whether, you know, a, a limited number of days open uh, where the public feels that's adequate. One of the reasons for the five day also might be uh, to keep somebody from just coming in doing a Friday, Saturday, Sunday block and just having their raves and parties and right. only open on the weekends. So, I mean, there's pros and cons of both, both everything, everything in this business. Because mm -hmm. yep. you, could, you could do Saturday, Sunday, 12 to 2, or 12, you know, 11 o'clock in the morning to 2 o'clock at night, that's 13 hours. I mean, you can do it in three days. Yeah. Do we so, want a place like that? Right, I, I, that's a good point. 
the, this 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 mitigates makes them a true a, restaurant. A makes weekend a weekend kind of dance club, thing. whatever you know. And you're only asking for a hearing. That doesn't mean if they have a particular problem that you can't do like you do in other cases. You can make an exception. I wouldn't change it. We made several exceptions already this year. Yes, we have. We just done one a while ago. Right. We just. I mean, it's sometimes you got to protect yourself and then be. I think if, to handle the other I think if you're going to be a true restaurant, I think you're going to should be open five days. Maybe the the key to this is if we change shall to may be grounds for revocation, suspension, or non-renewal. That's a good point. Because it's saying it, it's mandatory that if if you don't five days, we shall revoke, suspend, <coughs> or or not renew your license for failure to accommodate the public. If you if you turn it into a may, then then that's basically how we've been operating for a while here. We've, uh, especially because of COVID, we've been not demanding that uh, all the licensees follow this public accommodation rule. And to Mr. Barnhart's point, I love that point. I, I almost wish it would be even more clear that somebody could request a modification from this board as long as it's not to differ anything in the state law. So if it's something like this, where this board has determined hours and days, but that's not replicated in the state law, I, as an applicant, I would prefer it be very clear and say that during the application process, I could request of this board a modification for those hours so that I know that that's an option and available to me. Yeah. Okay, well, Rule 57 doesn't even talk about, it talks about a renewal, but you're actually extending it to an application of, of any, uh, Prospective licensee. Well, when I have a when I consult with a client, I explain to them that there is currently an hour of operations rule, and that is 30 hours a week, and I and we verify that they can meet that requirement. There's only been a few where it's been like tight, and it's usually the breweries or the Class D licenses, frankly. Um, but if if they were to in that situation say, well. I'd really, you know, my business model works better under 25 hours. I'd like to know coming in for an application that at that point in time, based on the evidence presented at that application hearing, I could say that to you. Now, maybe you don't want to make that applicable for restaurants is kind of what I'm hearing from you, not to put words in your mouth, but maybe that's applicable to the other classes of licenses. Um, you know, because the way it reads right now, as, a, as an educated uh, alcoholic beverage uh, reader sure. of the rules <laughs> I understand that this is not in state law but this is a local rule but a lot of people would not understand that and would not understand that they could ask you so in reading this it might deter them from even seeking an application because they can't meet this requirement so if that's an option that you believe is open to them then I say why not specify it in here so that then you're not shutting that door straight off the bat and we have granted exceptions Yes, and I'm uh, and I am aware of that. I think so one of the tea rooms maybe had an ex has had an hour exception or something like that. I think there are places where it makes sense. Yeah. Um, uh, so, Mr. Bernhardt, I think that's an excellent uh, decision. And and Kelly, and you felt that the Class A uh, is more restrictive than state law. For this rule that a public accommodation really applies to class B that that was your point yes to start I don't with. know if you are I did not look at whether this board in my opinion does or does not have the authority to still make those requirements on class A's I'm just saying that that actual requirement of accommodate the public is right. specific to the restaurants and hotels mm. in that case I don't mind leaving class A in uh, um, uh, personally well, Dave suggested <clears throat> just putting the period after license. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. And getting rid of the phrase due to a failure to accommodate the public. And change the I think what Kelly is saying is we, if we wanted to add wording saying something like. Um, At the discretion of the board. You know, you could almost mirror it with the class D. Um, off-sale premise language yeah. <coughs> as you know at the discretion of the board okay uh, so I think we agreed to change the last sentence <coughs> shall to may mm -hmm. be grounds 
give us more discretion. What a period after license. What a period after license strike due to a failure to accommodate pub the public. Amen. We're going to leave A in there. Something like at the discretion of the board, exceptions can be made. I, I think what Kelly would rather have is that in the application rule. Is that right? Um, I don't know. It might almost be a, a general rule that would be applicable to anything you wanted to modify that's only in your rules and regs and is not state. I can't think of another example. I think this is the biggest one, but. Okay. I don't think we should encourage the, no, I don't, I don't think, think we should encourage, encourage people to be open less than 30 hours. So if, if they retain competent and smart counsel, they'll learn that. It's a possibility, but it's not an right. inevitable. So I don't think right, but in I'm, and I'm not saying the 30 hour. I mean, the 30 hours might come up, but what I'm saying is you are heightening the restriction by adding the five day a week requirement. Because right now there is a 30 hour a week. So in that instance, that's really where, more where my head is at. By increasing the burden on, on businesses, by adding the five day a week provision, why not also make it clear that if they can't, if they can still meet the others that either way that they explain right. that to the board. Kelly, I keep hearing and have been hearing word during COVID, I could personally understand it very easily. You keep hearing this burden on the businesses. Burden on the businesses. How many liquor license has been suspend, su surrendered in the past year? At least I, I got three. Um, Casa Rigas, or what's the, Casa, the Mexican restaurant we just approved? Um, Michael's Steak and Lobster, County Line Cantina. One coming up this week. Next month's going. going. Which one? Market Tavern. Oh, well, that's not that's yet. Going. And how many new ones have we issued? Like 14? Mm -hmm. 10 to 14? So business must be pretty good or they would be opening up under rules and regulations. Correct. They are meeting the 30 hour a week requirement. It, as well they should. That's my point. Right. Mm -hmm. And every place I listed, except for County Line Cantina, there's a new business going in. Yeah. That should. Oh. Mm -hmm. So we're five days in. I would. As far as I'm too. concerned, it should I be would. at least five days and thirty, 30 hours. hours. Okay. However, you want to put it wherever. And we're going to put footnote two after uh, license period, because otherwise right. you delete it. Yeah, delete footnote number two. Delete that. You're de deleting it all together. Yeah. What? Um, deleting due to failure to accommodate the public. I actually don't mind footnote two staying in there, even if you strike due to a failure to accommodate the public, because it, I think it makes clear that um, there are other considerations besides accommodating the, the public uh, in this rule. Uh, it's, uh, it's the speculation. Well, on the other hand, uh, that's right. Maybe in Carroll County, it's not an issue. I don't know. I don't know. I'd leave it in. I, I think, think it is. should be in there. Yeah, I okay. can leave it in. Yeah. All right. Okay. Any other questions or comments on the rules and regulations that we have? We've got several other things to discuss, but is there any other comments or questions on the yellow book that we have discussed? If not, the first piece of legislation that we are going to request has to do with the seating, the 50 seats you can now use 15 bar seats in conjunction with table seats to satisfy that requirement is there any comment or questions or suggestions about that that's fairly simple any opposition The next piece of legislation, I don't have a copy of that. I thought I did. For the new class D.
Keith, have you got it's a not, copy? It's not, it's not Class D, it's Class C. Class C. It's the Art Council. Art Council. And yeah, but there's some fees involved in that. Correct. In addition us a letter. to that. He sent yeah, us a letter. It was, uh, no, that's what Tim sent out to us. Yeah. Um, I actually didn't think we were going to be discussing legislation today, or I would have had copies of all of it for you. But the Class C was, it was for the special fire company and the Arts Council license. But there's also Thank you. a discussion of the current fees involving those right. classes. Yes. Right. Thank you. So we were going to double all the fees that are currently there. Right. And then add. Um, that does not reflect any comment, any of the conversations you've had about right. the other fees, just to be clear. And yeah. then we were going to add the Arts Council a special license for 1500 for unlimited. Two. 2000. Okay, the, propose, the other proposed legislation, the annual fees now for Class C's. If they have 10 events or less per year, they can obtain a license for $125. We propose to double that to 250. Mm -hmm. More than 10, not to exceed 20. Their license fee is 250. And that's proposed to go to 500. I don't have my sheet that has those figures, so correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, you're right so far. For 21 to 30 events per year, the fee is 375. 750. <coughs> to 750. The current fee for 41 events and more is $500. No, 40 events. Period. For not more than 40 events, yeah. right? For not more than 40 events, <coughs> is 500, and that would go to 1,000. We propose adding a new class, the Carroll Arts Center and the Fire Company, to apply to fire companies and specifically the Carroll Arts Center. For 41 or more events per year, to be issued a license for $2,000. Now, you can only apply for each one of those <coughs> event licenses one time per year. So that if you have a license to have 10 events, for instance, and you need the 11th, 12th, or whatever it is, you have to, under current license, apply for a one-day license. And in the case of the Arts Center, where they have more than 100 events the past year and for several years, I assume, they've paid as much as $3,500 per year for license to have those events. So we are proposing state legislations to have Carroll County add the fifth number to accommodate them and the fire companies if necessary for a fee of $2,000 a year. Any comments or questions? I will briefly comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I do have Lynn Griffith with me from the Carroll County Arts Council. She is the executive director, and so I thought it was important based on our last conversation to have her available in case there were, were any additional questions. Um, I just want to clarify one thing, that the, the fees that you just spoke to are specific only to arts centers, actually, not just arts centers, arts centers on West Main Street and the fire departments. Um, the greater Class C license, I'm not sure if this board is proposing to amend those fees or not, um, but those fees are, are different and separate from um, this specific license. Uh, so we had proposed an annual fee of $1,500, which is in line with the existing annual fee for a Class C beer, wine, and liquor license. 
um, if one were to, because, I, well, I'll go back. To, at our last meeting, um, it was asked and I specified to you that one of the only reasons that we don't meet the requirement for the Class C beer, wine, and liquor full license is because we don't have the seats, mm -hmm. uh, the seating component. So aside from that, we are analogous to a Class C beer, wine, and liquor license. So I felt that that same fee was appropriate uh, here. And in that letter that you have in front of you, I will not repeat all of that, but um, we did provide some of answers to some of the questions that were raised and also noted the actual gross sales. I mean, I think it, it kind of goes without saying, and Lynn can piggyback off of this if she cares to, but this is not viewed by the Carroll County Arts Council as a generator of revenue, if you will. This is just an amenity for those existing events. So, um, you know, any consideration of that by this board is appreciated. Just to clarify that letter, we may have a copy of it in a second. Last year, the CCAC gross sales for alcoholic beverages totaled gross sales $3,530.07. Why would you spend $3,500 to make nothing? You want to answer that one? Because gross, they want, I mean, I'll gross say. Gross sales were $3,500. I find that hard to believe for 100 events. Sir, last year, the, the $3,500 number is for fiscal year 22, most of which we were not holding events because of COVID. Last year, we had less than 25 events, and that includes off-site events such as the Peep Show, at which there is no alcohol. We don't offer alcohol for any family and children events. Um, this year we will have 100 events because COVID is over and people are coming out to events again. What was your sales in 19? Um, our, I, you just, I, I just can't comprehend and spend $3,500 to make nothing, whatever the case might be. So somewhere along the line, Alcoholic beverage sales must have been profitable or are profitable or you wouldn't be spending thirty five hundred dollars to make seven. Well sir, we're we are a nonprofit. Um, we offer alcohol because it's an ex expectation of our audiences. When they go to other theaters, um, they buy alcohol. If you go to any theater in a sixty mile radius, you'll find that they all offer cocktails. Uh, we don't offer cocktails, we only offer beer and wine. It is an expectation of our consumers. Um, our profit last year was less than $500 on all of our concessions. You could ask the same question about popcorn. But when people come and sit in the theater, they expect that snacks, candy, popcorn, and beverages will be available. So these numbers that we have really are distorted by the recent history of the COVID. Yes. Okay. So we're thinking that your gross alcohol sales will be substantially more than $3,500 for the upcoming fiscal year, especially in light of the fact that the $3,500 was for 125 events, did you say? Less than 25 events. Less than 25. Okay. So 20, less than 25 events. You have gross sales of 3530 and you're going to have how many events in th this fiscal year? Uh, right now we have 87 on our calendar. So even though it's an amenity, which brings people, puts them in the seats, uh, as far as you're concerned, if it's a wash, it's successful. Absolutely. Um, 
So you, you will certainly make more than $3,500 in gross alcohol sales for this fiscal year. Would you? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yes. So uh, the, the chairman was asking about 2019. Off, off the top of your head, can, can you tell us how well you did with that, with alcohol sales? Hey, I'm, I'm all for you, okay? Don't misunderstand me. I just can't see why you would need more than the 40 events that you have now if you really scrutinize it, unless you have alcohol at 100 events, normally. That, the, yes. we. The, the impetus for this request was that we need the license for more than 40 events. I think where we left it, it was my understanding last month that uh, where it was left was coming up with an appropriate license, annual fee for that license. And so that's where I was making the comparison between this and the Class C beer, wine, and liquor. I was unaware that this board had uh, intended to raise the other fees related to this license. Uh, as well and really I was analyzing it under the class C beer wine and liquor because to me that seemed like the most close comparison from an administrative perspective uh, to this and so we proposed the $1,500 figure for that reason basically if, if I remember that was the gist of the, the conversation that we had when we discussed it originally and we discussed it a little bit more after consideration of, of the other fees and that's where we came up with the two versus the 15 uh, in our thinking at that time. So. So what was, what was your fees that you paid last year for your license, one day license? How much? It's $50 every time they get one. If yeah, I well remember many, right, the figure that they paid was 35 dollars. some dollars. But they paid for fees in the year that they had recollection for. How much was it? I don't so I, Can I interject? I yeah. heard that, and that actually is not correct. We didn't spend anywhere near $3,500 last year. Um, the $35 is what I believe what we projected it would cost us if we applied for additional days over what we have already paid for this year. I'm not sure where that $3,500 number came from. I think that's $3,500 at $100 per event for 35 additional events. Actually, 3500 comes from paying 500 for, for, for the, the 41 events. And then the extra $50 the extra. And then application fees. If you do around 100 events, which would be a more normal year, then you're paying for 60 one-day licenses, which is $3,000. So that's 3500 yeah. Yeah, but last year- Because of COVID. I think they paid for the 500 uh, for the 41 events and didn't use anywhere near that. That's correct. Well, basically it comes down to what we feel would be I think ever, everybody's in agreement that we need to propose an additional license classification. And everybody agrees that we don't want to charge any more than what we think is fair. We suggested 2000 and you're suggesting 1500 So. I am suggesting whatever this board deems equitable. Um, I know that we had back and forth. I was unclear that the 2000 was a, a firm proposal on the part of this board at the last meeting. Therefore, I Our did some lawyer. research and looked at the other comparable licenses and would propose 1500 as an equitable number. But we, I understand that this board now is looking gr at some greater fee amendments at the state level that I was unaware of at that time as well. So how many events are they going to have this year? How many are you scheduled for? We have 87 events on the calendar. Some 
don't that harm our children and family events where we would not offer alcohol. Okay. So you th that's going to be a definite number, or you may be adding more than that? Uh, we will so add more. Kids. Yeah. Um, okay. I can't imagine we have room for more than 12 additional events. Okay. So if the fee were, as we propose at the moment, $2,000, you would not lose money. You'd be saving some money. Well, on, your, on your alcohol sales. We would not lose money. Actually, you're, you'd be saving some money in fees. Absolutely. And, and we charge very little for alcohol. We charge $4 for a glass of wine and $4 for a beer. So right now, we're not even, you know, we could definitely raise that to be market competitive mm -hmm. to ensure that we're not losing money. But that's, it's never been viewed as a money-making. It's more convenience. Um, Three, four thousand dollars. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Restaurants are not on the on the block. Restaurants are not on the discussion right now. <laughs> you want them to be? No. Okay. Think just sit back there. <laughs> Maybe you all would like to. So if you have 87 events, the way it, the rule is now, you'll be paying $2,850 for your total alcohol licensing. So if we made it 2,000, you'd still be saving $850. Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. So part of our discussion as a board involved this case but also, we, as Kelly mentioned, we looked at fees across the board and, and discussed it as well. So it was kind of a, uh, a global discussion that came up with these numbers and uh, it happened to include this, uh, the Arts Council. There were suggestions of more than 2,000 and, and you suggested less. So uh, we came up with 2,000 amongst the board and I really haven't heard any anyone suggesting we change it, uh, unless I'm wrong. You want my two cents worth or no? Yeah, no, yes, not Chairman. really. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you want? Um, I don't want to hear enough. I don't want to hear enough about a peep show. <laughs> no. You sure? I'm positive. Not a peep peep I'm now, a peep gonna show. Make, I'm not going to make a peep about a peep show. Okay. Um, <laughs> I kind of think 1500 because that's what we charge restaurants and that's what we charge other non-fraternal clubs. And it... Who are the other non-fraternal clubs? Um, it is... Elks, Moose... Elks, Moose. Golf courses. Golf courses. No, not Elks and Moose. Non fraternal. I thought they're fraternal. Fraternal. They're fraternal. Yeah. So it's I just want to see how far you were going to go before I said that. It's yeah. Fairhaven and golf courses. Coon Club up there? Well, but they only have like beer. So theirs is ridiculously cheap. cheap. Yeah, it's $70 annually for beer and wine for Class C licenses. What? For a full-blown Class C beer wine license, it is $70 annually. And for beer only, it's 50 For, for clubs. clubs. Yeah. Right. Hey, are taxes any different? you got to save yourself a PR problem and give it to them for 1500 Because when it goes to the, to the uh, delegation, they're going to have a public hearing. And they're going to come with a hundred people, and, and I think you're just better off give them, give them a fifteen hundred license. It's more than fair. It's five hundred dollar difference between the two. I know. Thank you, Pete. That was a lot of help. County isn't going to go broke. One I was going to say enough. thank you, Pete. That, that was a lot of help, Pete. <laughs> Pete, <laughs> you understand? We didn't ask him to be here today, but we appreciate his comments. <laughs> that lawyers are on a retainer fee. 
No, I am we doing all of my to, work we pro must bono. Get them to earn their fees. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. I am doing all of my work for the Carroll County Arts Council pro bono. I am here asking for you to to give some equitable consideration. I'm sure you too. get in the peep show for free. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe we can negotiate that one. We'll send you ten dollars right. to enter your Thank you. Thank you. You have any Tom Mix movies there anymore? Tom Mix. She don't know who Tom Mix is. She ain't old enough. And my point, my I like my point too. If they did have a dining room at the Arts Council, they could apply for a Class C, a Class C you know, club license. They got a theater. What do they need a dining room for? Can't you eat? Well, the by by rule, they need a dining room now. If they put, you just talked about a while ago about popcorn prices. <laughs> Would there be any interest in splitting the difference? No, I. We thought two thousand was was fair. Uh, Fifteen hundred dollars, as as you say, is what a, a beer license is. So for a restaurant, so on and so forth. So I. Five hundred dollars is not going to make them. Five hundred dollars ain't going to break us. Five hundred dollars ain't going to make us. So it's all for the good of the community anyway. So yeah. I, I wouldn't be opposed to changing it to fifteen hundred dollars, but that's that's me. What's your pleasure, Bill? I think there are big community service. Um, there are nonprofit. Um, can't afford to pay their attorney. <laughs> so I, I would probably be up for 1500 Are Are you suggesting maybe she didn't have another job today? <laughs> for $500, we can, we can bring an in, a live performance to one of Carroll County Public Schools to serve 400 children. So $500 is a lot of money to us. Um, we're doing $10,000 worth of free children's programming this year, and if we could do more, I would love that. So $500 doesn't seem like a lot of money, but we can buy a lot with that and reach many children. Let me ask you one question. Is all the work there done volunteer or are there salaries? And without telling me exactly who gets what, what's the salary base, like 10000 up to 100000 or what's, what's this, the salary line there? Our lowest paid full-time employee makes $46,000, has a master's degree, and works more than 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. I'm the highest paid employee, and I make $85,000, and I work 55 or 60 hours a week. Okay. So in the pie chart that you sent us, I don't have it in front of me. Um, there's a breakdown of grants that you grant to the community. <sighs> Off the top of your head, do you know what the, that percentage is? I don't know the percentage. I can tell you that our overall cost last year, um, we spent about $690,000. We gave away um, a little over $70,000. That's increasing this year to almost $100,000. <clears throat> Um, in grants that we will be giving to arts organizations in Carroll County. Um, and again, you have to consider that last year our numbers are quite skewed because of the effects of COVID. Right, so I'm looking at grants and scholarships in the uh, expenses yes. Venn diagram is 10%. Management and administration is 52%. So management and administration, is that salaries and health care and things like that? The salaries, health care, and our infrastructure. So our expenses for... Like, um, like utilities, you mean? We pay some of our utilities, and I have to be honest, Westminster City pays some of our utilities. So yes, that would, that would be basically our costs to run the building and staff it. Then I see programs at 9%. Um, <coughs> yeah, those are the fees that we would have paid to performers. So yes, I agree that this is not
not an impressive list of numbers. Um, that will change this year. Um, that's part of the reason why we are having so many more community events and so much free programming. I'm just confused by why there's only 10% of grants and scholarships uh, out of that chart, well, as far as expenses go. Uh, revenues, you had grants to the uh, Art Council was 38% came in, 10% went out to grants and scholarships. Uh, am I reading that wrong or right? Well, the, no, you're reading that correctly. The grants that come in are operating, we received 100, almost 100, well, $181,000 from the state of Maryland, um, and that is an operating support grant, um, and we are mandated to spend $5,000 of that on arts and education. Um, that's it. The rest of it goes to uh, $60,000 went to our community arts development grants, and we gave a little more than $10,000 in what we call mini grants, um, but our final mini grant application is due in June, so the checks didn't go out until July, um, so that'll appear on this year's, um, but that's a negligible amount, probably $3,000. Right. Um, and then the majority of the money that we receive from the state of Maryland in the form of grants um, goes towards programming costs. Yeah, so I'm looking at scholarships, Tom Holder scholarship, total of $385.61 was awarded to four youth, four local youth. If this were the movies, I would say youths to participate in our classes and camps? Yes, we charge $125 for summer camp, and we offer scholarships to children that can afford to attend. That's scholarships to your own camp, right? To our own camp, your own yes. Camp. So, uh, we, also offer, we also gave away $7,000 in scholarships to colleges. To graduating seniors, one to every one to a senior from every high school. So, did I hear that correctly, or I didn't hear it correctly? That fifty-two percent went to salaries. Fifty-two percent was not salaries. I, that's management and administration. I can tell you exactly what our salary figure was. I'll hold on just a moment. And last year we had a higher salary amount because our executive director. Quit. She was replaced, and we had two executive directors for three months. We had a south. We had a vacation and leave payout to her, which was almost ten thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars. Then the second director they hired left, and then I started at the end of December. Um, so we had higher than normal costs in the director mm -hmm. um, category. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. no. So if if we propose this legislation to create this additional classification and suggest that the initial fee be fifteen hundred dollars, is that agreeable or all the discussion. I think we have already agreed to request the other classification fee increases. Is yes, we did. We, for that? we agreed on that, yes. What was your total figure? Did you come up with that? her for even trying to do that on a cell phone, frankly. <laughs> yeah, that's the challenge. Yeah. <laughs> well, 
while she's looking that up, just a comment. A one-day license currently is $50. And if you take these other classifications, even with the increase in fees, and divide it by the maximum, you're coming up with 20 and $25 per event. Mm -hmm. While well, she's coming up with that, uh, I tried to get to this earlier, but didn't see a good time. Uh, the, the advertisement for the hearing said that the board was going to vote on final language for the 2022 book for rules. So I think you ought to do that so we don't have to go back and go through this again. <laughs> no, it's next month is the ad. Oh, well, it's that? next month to, yeah. for the final vote? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. October will be the. All right. I'm, I'm Final I'm vote, which I hope that we have clarified and, and made all the recommendations here today. It seems like everybody agreed of those rule changes and so on and so forth and regulations in this book. So I'm assuming that that will be presented for final vote in October, as well as this legislation request so that we can get it in by November 1st. Mm -hmm. Ooh, am, am I out in space? No. Thinking otherwise? I, I was a month ahead of myself. <laughs> no, no. I, I, Sometimes we all are. Going back to the other issue, going back to the other issue, I, I also did the math for the first time and if the Arts Council has 80 events where they sell alcoholic beverages, it's about $25 per event mm -hmm. at, two, at a, t a fee of $2,000. I frankly don't find that to be onerous or one way or the other, but again, it's $500. One way, $500. Another way, to me, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. It's whatever the board wishes, but I think that 2000 is adequate and fair. at the risk of causing consternation amongst the public uh, at the next commissioner hearing. So our total for uh, salaries and benefits and FICA and all that sort of stuff was $385,000. That included an extra $20,000 in executive director expenses that we wouldn't have incurred so if I remember that pie chart, the revenue was 586000 Yes, we did not have a good year, and we spent 746 Right. So you spent 52% for overhead versus minus some things that were picked up by other agencies. That's correct. Well, I, I mean, I feel that we're actually reducing their, their costs from 50 $50 an event to $25 an event. Um, so, I mean, t to me, it's a no-brainer. I think that's certainly fair um, at the 2000 What's your thought, Mr. Barnhart? I will defer to you, to gentlemen. This, I, 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 basically, I, I agree with that. I, you know, it's $25 an event. I think that's fair in, in light of the... Uh, the magnitude of money that's involved uh, with this nonprofit and where the money's going. Uh, t keeping in mind that the figures that we've had are, are skewed because of, of the uh, disadvantages that the Arts Council has had right. during the last fiscal year. So we proposed $2,000, and we are in agreement then that we're going to let it at $2,000 for this new class. I mean, I would be for that. It's a, it's a decrease in their 
event charge from 50 to 25, I think that's that's going that's that's a good decrease. I think it's a good result for the Arts Council, um, but again, it's on one hand it, we're only talking about $500 difference between. Yeah, it's not any really big. It's not really a any big we deal. We keep talking about it. What, it let's <laughs> come to a conclusion. 500 is 500, one way or the other. Or are we going to charge two or are we going to charge 15? All right. My vote is for two. I'll second that. Well, are you making that as a motion? Is this a, Do I have to make a motion? second <laughs> situation? I don't, Mr. Dixon, I'll defer to you. Is this, a, or is this the board recommending state legislation up well, to the commissioner? Well, that's, that's what I'm looking at it as, the okay. state legislation. I just wasn't sure if procedurally we needed a motion second or not. Or That, that is going to help you guys out, right, from the way we had it before to switching it to where it's going to be $25 an event. I mean, that's going to help, help the Arts Council out. Is that... It Correct. is absolutely going to help. That's why we've made this proposal. Um, it will also, from an administrative perspective, it will now let, let them fill out one application for right. all of these events, which be. is part of the consideration of the one day, I would assume, is part of the consideration of the one day event fee figure, is that for each of those one day events, there's an application and then as you just conducted during your business meeting there's a consideration individually of each single one mm -hmm. this will allow for a much easier administrative process both on the part of the carroll county arts council but also on your part and so that is all reflected and that's why i analyze this consistent with the class c license because it's different than individual one day events Okay, so since we're reducing your feed from 50 to $25 an event, I'm going to make a motion, if that's okay with you, Chairman. Please. I make a motion that uh, we make it um, $2,000, the total events. I'll second that motion. Motions is properly made and seconded that we propose state legislation to create a new class of over 41 more events per year, specifically applicable to a far company or arts center on West Main Street in Westminster that holds a Class C multiple event license. Any further discussion on the motion? No. And are we also, can you go to this? Yeah, Doubling these fees yeah. under the- Let's take this one one at a time. Motion. The motion is for or just one or part just of the law. One part of the law. Okay. Uh, All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. So ordered. Now, that's stated. Do we need to have a motion to include an increase in the existing fees for those classifications? And if so, the fees that were quoted. Two fifty, five hundred, seven fifty, and a thousand dollars for classes one, two, three, and four. Well, if we do need a motion, I'll make the motion. Uh, I hereby move that we amend. I need to make a motion for the section sixteen thirteen twelve of the annotated code of Maryland in connection with E, subparagraph E, uh, one, two, three, four, whereby we are doubling the annual fee for the licenses for all those designated events. I second the motion. Motion has been properly made and seconded that we uh, amend, or not amend, but request legislation to double the fees as mentioned for class one, two, three, four under page section blah, blah, blah. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. So word. Is there any other do you need to make a motion, since you did that one, do you need to make a motion for the bar, bar seating? Probably. Probably. I make it no. <laughs> do, do we have, uh, we don't have uh, what Tim put together for that, do we? Because I thought this was all going to okay. be next month. So. Or is it next month? Or, oh no, we're voting on this next month. Yeah, 
Yeah, Tim, but I thought I, I've the got legislation was also next month. I've got a copy of what Tim put together, but it's not complete because uh, we put a limit of 15 seats at the bar, and that's not mentioned. All it says is <coughs> the seats at the bar and count are included in the 50 individual count, not 50 at the bar. So only a maximum. Change it. Only a maximum of 15 can be counted. So this is what Tim proposed based upon the discussion that we had to include seats at the bar. And this is for a Class B license, right? The, the, the 50 seat requirement it's for a Class, class C. B. Oh, class Your C. wine and liquor license. Your wine, wine and liquor, liquor license. Class B, BWL. Yes. Okay. Then, yeah, I mean, I'll make the motion that we uh, request uh, that our delegation amend the uh, state law pertaining to Carroll County t uh, in connection with Class B air, wine, and liquor licenses uh, requirement that a 50 seat um, maximum or minimum is minimum. Uh, uh, be calculated by using no more than 15 seats at the bar. I don't know if I said that right, but that's how it came out. Is there a second? Second it. Well, it's been properly made that we ask legislation to be introduced under section so and so, whatever it might correctly be, that seating whereas required for 50 or more be included up to 15 seats at a bar. Correct wording. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Opposed, no. So ordered. Motion carries. Any other things to be brought before the board? I just received a letter from Mount Airy. Um, I can let you look at my phone or you want me to print it out? Oh, let us in reference to the Oktoberfest. Let us look at it. This is signed by town administrator. Well, they act on behalf of the town, so well they say they don't want it to use. Okay. I mean, if you want to read it, let our attorney yeah. let yeah. our attorney read it <laughs> to, make sure, to make sure it's legal. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't have my glasses for, for this. Uh, I can read it. So you read it to us? Read it to the record? <laughs> read it to the record. Go ahead. Go back to your microphone. Got you off the hot seat. <laughs> yeah, we might have been pressing it there. <laughs> <clears throat> From the town of Mount A, Carroll County Government Board of Licensed Commissioners, Liquor Board, 225 North Center Street, Westminster, Maryland, 21157. Attention, Keith Benfer. Dear Mr. Benfer, on Saturday, September 24, 2022, the Mount A Main Street Association and Ava's T21 Foundation will host Mount A's fourth annual Mount Airy Oktoberfest. The event's hosts have received a one-day beer and wine permit from the Board of Licensed Commissioners Liquor Board, and they have received permission from the Town of Mary, Mount Airy to allow alcohol within the festival limits through town resolution 2022-4 approved on April 4, 2022. The resolution that was passed by the town council specifically states a special or temporary license will be attained by Avers T21 Foundation and the license obtained its special license number CC, I mean, excuse me, 7CLS-2076, which is a specific license to Avis Foundation, and no other business or intended in entity in is allowed in the designated area. The only open containers for consumption allowed in the festival area must be purchased from one or two event beer tents located in the rail yard next to Con Conceders Main Street Bistro. Per the license number, 7CLS-2076, Avis T-21 Foundation is licensed by the State of Maryland to keep this for sale and sell beer and wine at the retailer 
to a bona fide entertainment event held or conducted by the above named license at the place designated for a period not to exceed seven days beginning September 24, 2022. We appreciate your attention to this matter and it's an intention to support a safe and responsible event. Thank you, signed by David Warrington, Town Administrator, Town of Mount Airy. Well, there's some things going on there. Okay. So this Oktoberfest, if, if I'm hearing that correctly without reading it, the Oktoberfest is really a fundraiser for the AVT 21 Foundation. Correct. Okay, and as part of that fundraising, there's a resolution that was passed by Mount Airy outlining what you just said. Correct. As a fundraiser for that foundation and that. And, and, and the Main Street, Mount Airy Main Street Association. And, okay, foundation and association. Right. And there is a vendor located in a tent. Yes, two as, event beer tents. Okay, and that they are to be the sole provider of alcoholic beverages for the Oktoberfest. Correct. Okay. And that's a resolution. Mm -hmm. Is that what he's, that's, that's what it's yeah. saying, right? Yes. And there's, and there's nothing in there about any concerns with the VFW or their procedures. Right. I was told something by Pamela Reed, but it's not addressed in this letter. Okay, so this, okay, so we have a town resolution making this beer tent, our two locations, the sole source of alcoholic beverages for the Oktoberfest to be held. Correct. Okay. So you, you're, you're using Oktoberfest, and that's ref references to 2924 or is that a separate ten, event ten, ten. no the mount airy the fourth annual mount airy oktoberfest is being hosted by the mount airy street main street association avers t-21 foundation when on september 24th oh, september 24th okay so it's being hosted by so do they have the authority to pick and choose who can participate and who can't in it? I would think, I personally would oh, think so. Apparently the, the town yeah, apparently passed it, the resolution. But and they're they holding, so. yeah. But it's, it's, it's not the town that's actually holding the Oktoberfest. It's no. being hosted by a private foundation, ATV, right. I mean, AVT21 foundation. Yeah, AVT21 and the and Main, Main Street Association. Association. And a... Uh, Better Business Bureau or whatever. Oh, I mean, like all the towns, usually it's by the Main Street Associations. Mm -hmm. okay. Sykesville, yeah. Matt, yeah, Tony Town, it's usually. So they're responsible for the beer tent, those two, the hosts? Yes. But it's being, but because they're using city property, the our one day license requires the someone from the city to actually uh, pro, uh, sign the application. Yes. Is that right? And that's where the council lady came in? Yes. Okay. She is, she's on the council, but she's also a founder of this AVA's T21. And she holds the one-day liquor license. Oh. And she holds the one-day liquor license. Okay. Okay. And the resolution was, they did, they did, their, did a resolution saying these two allowed to hold, hold this event. And there was language in that resolution that the sole all right, hold on. Of alcohol will be the two beer tents. Mm, that's what it said, yeah. Yes, but let me see if I can find, They, I thought they attached the resolution. Yes, they attached, can you read the resolution too? Yeah, that might be even more uh, instructive. All right, Town of Mount Airy, resolution number 2022-4. A resolution by the mayor and council of the town of Mount Airy no, as known as the town to authorize the consumption and possession of, uh, in open containers of alcoholic beverage on public property during the foundation event, also known as the event. Oktoberfest, Main Street from Prospect Street to Hood Street, September 24th, 
2022 from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Subject to the insurance of a special or temporary liquor license by the Liquor Board of Carroll County as the Liquor Board and to authorize the mayor and town manager to deliver identification to the state with regard to the event if necessary to proceed procure state approval for the closing and use of state roads during this event. Whereas the town is a municipal corporation of the state of Maryland, whereas pursuant to the authority under alcohol beverage articles in the Maryland Code section 6-208 and 6-321 and section 41-3D of the town code is within the power of the mayor and town council to adopt a resolution authorizing consumption and possession in open containers of alcoholic beverage on property within the boundaries of the town subject to an insurance of a special or temporary permit issued by the liquor board. Now, there, there, therefore, be it resolved by the mayor and town council of the town this fourth day, day of April 22, that on September 24, 2022, from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., the consumption and possession of open, in an open container of alcoholic beverage during the event is hereby approved by the public, excuse me, approved on public property within the town in such locations as may, may be identified above in, in the application for a special or temporary liquor license, subject to the insurance of a special or temporary liquor license by the liquor board. And be it further resolved that the mayor and town administrator are hereby authorized, if necessary, to execute and deliver indemnity to the, from the town to the state, its agencies, its personnel, including but not limited to, to the Maryland State Highway Administration and its employees from and against cl any claims or large suit arising from in connection with this event as may be required to attain state authorization for the closing of a state road during this event and the use of such closed state roads for and during the event, including permission for the consumption, possession, and open containers of alcoholic beverage within the areas of such closed state roads. Do you read a resolution or a book? And that's, pay, and that's page one of two. I don't have the second page. It is a book. So far, I've heard nothing about limiting who supplies the alcoholic beverages. This allows alcoholic beverages to be possessed in open containers. The two, the two beer tents, or they want that. About in the resolution. That's on the letter, not on the resolution. Right, right. So they never really specifically asked us in the letter not to allow the uh, VFW. They were supposed to, but they didn't. The, For some reason they were hesitant to put that in there. My only my only answer to that question is specifically speaking with Pamela Reed, council member whose license names is on license, she's requesting not to allow the VFW and upper deck to participate. But she, but but she is on the council. In my opinion, there's a big conflict. Mm -hmm. She is on the council, and she is chairman or whatever it is of this organization. Correct. What the hell? I, um, I agree with, turn the, it back on. with the chairman about the seeming conflict of interest. Uh, we don't whether those beer tents are part of the hosting by the, by the foundation to raise money, uh, if, if there is any competition with uh, any of the other merchants or license holders, whether that, whether that depresses the money the foundation raises, we're just, it's not clear. But that shouldn't, I don't see how that impacts, I don't see how, it, yes, if there's a conflict, that's up between the mayor the mayor knows what's going on, the town administrator knows what's going on. That should not affect what the decision from the liquor board is. My, 
when someone asks whose name's on the license asks for something they didn't ask for that in that letter okay but is she's that, asked is, per, is that correct or not i agree with that now they were supposed to it was supposed to be, but i'm going by what the licensees asked me right it's the same thing if if, if johansson's wants to go set up on the story story road and have a beer garden that if the if the town says he can't do it even though he has a cater license allows him to do it are we going to allow him to do it well johansson's is not a 501c3 right it, it, that, but that should not have the matter because he has a catering license. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Why does it um, matter if it's not profit? It doesn't. It's still he's still al selling alcohol in some place. He's not allowed to sell it. Yeah, but if, if you're if you're a for-profit outfit like you Hanson's, then it's a conflict for you to say to, to to your competitor, oh, you're not allowed to be out on the streets of Westminster. That's not right. But they. If, Let me if throw you another downtown. question to you. Suppose the town told Raphael he could not participate in the oyster stroll. Then he went, should not be allowed to participate. You're just doing things in reverse here for us as a liquor board. How am I doing in reverse? The, if, if, if you, you just said we shouldn't have any say about it. We should have if say the about it. The town says they can't do it or they can do it. But that's you should back up what, what the what the licensee is w requesting. I don't know they're requesting that. There's nothing in that letter to say that. All right, I can. Right. I agree, but I, I also know what she told me that I'm trying. To let, she didn't let me come ask, in here. Let me ask you all another question. When did you get this request? When this today, when she found out that. What does um, our rule say about one day license? Seven days. Seven days. Well, oh, the, we, we got the request for the for the one day liquor license back in April. Right. We got the request from VFW today. Right. Okay. And you got the request from her today. Correct. Once she found out the VFW was looking to to do How this. How did she find out? Either one of them or seven days ago. Okay. So VFW can't do it then. And the town. What will you tell the panelists? She can't do it now. She didn't back in April, you said, didn't she? Or asked for it? No, they asked for a license in oh, April. Oh, we, license we went back April. and looked at that a while ago. How did she find out VFW wanted to? I don't know. I, I, I would think. How many other licensed establishments are within that perimeter of Main Street besides what's his name? Um, Which yeah, you say is going to Superfoods is, is there. Lorenzo's, VFW, Crying Johnny's, Upper Deck. So five. So They're none just, of them have requested. No, only two have requested. It's been Upper Deck, VFW. and the VFW. Well, what are you going to tell Upper Deck? No. Because the town does not want you there. Did they specifically say they didn't want Upper Deck there? Not in the letter, but the council, Pamela Reed, as the council member, said that they don't, she does not want them to participate. She also has a connection to one of the fundraisers. And I'm just not sure of. of uh, but she's the licensee. She's the one that's running this event. Did you and contact her? What? what? Did you contact her and tell her we, were, we request a letter from her? Yes. Then why didn't we get one from her? Because she, she felt. A conflict by being she had a, you wanted you wanted something from the town to respond, so they had the town administrator sign the letter. They didn't respond to our request. Our request was for them to tell us that they didn't want those. I, I agree. I don't know why that wasn't in this. I don't know why this wasn't in this letter. And I, I can try. I'm gonna call them and try to get a letter saying that. I don't know. It was supposed to be. I don't know what. Again, you. As a subordinate, you tell you tell the boss what you want. The boss does what they want to do. So sometimes you explain to them what you want, and the boss does what they think is best. I explain what I want. You guys just tell me what you think is best. So the request by the VFW came to us when exactly and how? By email. It came by phone call this morning, and. Suzanne forwarded the message to me at 11 a.m. Okay, so we don't even have a request in writing? 
No. From the VFW? No. Oh, you mean about well, writing? I think it, well, I, I, why? Okay, well, good, Mr. Chair, I'm sorry. If we have rules and it says they got to do it seven days in advance, they did it two hours in advance. I personally, I don't like the whole thing, but I think we can turn that down very easily. Mm -hmm. Here's the rule, you didn't ask us. It's not, we're not even gonna consider it. You didn't apply to the rules, mm -hmm. it's out. I have to agree right. with you that, there. That's the reason for turning it down as opposed to a request by right. someone from the foundation. Yeah, right. I would agree with you. Can you handle that? Okay, and then Upper Deck sent me See if I, um, they sent Joe and I back Thursday a request to participate using their catering license. Well, they're which outside is, the seven days, so they right. notify, but they have nothing in writing. It's an email. It's an, it's email. an email, yes. There's an email from Upper Deck. I just don't know why I don't, why I didn't, I didn't understand, I guess, what they were asking for. Well, both of them. Don't make the. So uh, our rule requires them yeah, to uh, the seven days. to to request oh, seven days before the he this hearing. Uh, yeah. Protect them. Is it seven or, or is it Thursday, catering? Friday, Thursday, it's seven or ten. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's six I think days. Seven. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you're right. I'm going by the date. Yeah. It's it's in both of them are not without outside the seven days. Both of them yeah. outside the seven days. Yeah, yeah. protect. Yeah. Seven, seven days of this hearing. Seven days of this hearing. Both of them are inside, inside seven, seven days, days of this hearing. But caring license does not need to go to the board. Caring license just goes to me or Joe saying this is an event they're going to do. Okay. Are they both cater licensed? No. VFW is not. Okay. So we got VFW taken care of. Right. Upper deck is used, is going by the rules. They're in within seven days. They're they using the caring license. They have a cater license. Okay. How does the rule read? Does it say have to notify the board? I don't have my, I don't. You got the book there. Got the book. Anybody know the rule number? This is, this is, this is, this is for a participation in a one day license? No, it's a, is there a rule about that? It should be a catering rule. Well, what he's talking about, yeah, should be under restaurants with catering writers, not one day licenses. Okay. I, I don't like this table of contents and index because they're, no, they're, they're not Page 48. they're not intuitive Page 48. Well, what are you guys hanging around for it says at least 10 days in advance class BC restaurant okay so upper deck is a uh, restaurant caterer they have a, a class BC yes okay for each event's catered, okay, for a catered event, it says 10 days no, pick a in advance decide, of the so. date, time, sponsor, and location of such event. So that's 10 days of the event, or 10 days of the hearing. 10 days? Right. So the event is when? Saturday. Saturday. Is Saturday? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, days. well then, keeps your, your thoughts about the Class BC requirement. That's is it 10 days? Okay. 10 days according to Rule 47. So they so meet the requirement. They do make, they make 10 days. Uh -huh. Now, does it say, I mean, when they say notify the board, does it say notify the board or just notify? Notify the board. Okay. I take that as notifying me that. Yeah. I do too. No, notifying the board in writing. You're the, you're the board too. Okay. I got, I got an email. And that's writing. From Jane, from the licensees. And that, all right, upper deck. And the date of that is? September 15th. September 24th. Do you count? You got the email on the 15th. Uh, uh, that's what I meant. You got the email on the 15th? 15th, yep. 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, 22nd. That's nine days. Well, you count the 15th? Depends. 10 days in advance. So you don't count the day of you the event. Count, right. Okay. You, uh, so right. you skip the day of the event and. So they're short. So it's 15 and it's on the 24th? Yes. So let's just count 15. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, That's it. 24. But it has to be in advance of the 24th. Okay. That's nine days. So it's nine days in advance of the 24th. 
So um, I, 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 I move that we let Keith handle all of that. <laughs> <laughs> God, it just rolled down, it just rolled down hill big time. <laughs> yeah, you could have. Okay, I'll take care of it. All right, whatever you decide. Actually, I, I, that's levity. Uh, the chairman should uh, uh, tell us what, what we should consider. My only comment is going to be this. Don't call us for bail. <laughs> <laughs> You're on your own. You're going to take care of it, right? I'll take care of it. And I can't throw you underneath the bus, right? Well, just say that because of that board rule, that's why it's, they can't have it. Hey, you do have a rule. I would rely on that because, I mean, ultimately somebody could go take us, the liquor board, yeah. to court and say, you know, you, you, you're pre preventing me from being in this. Yeah. Which I think they you can. You're preventing me but from being in this. In, and you have nothing uh, in writing. So, so anybody who has a one-day liquor, anybody has a one-day license, I can go walk on that property and sell beer. And sell beer. Well, if you had something from her saying that she no, would no, it, do it doesn't it, matter. She doesn't have, I thought know. we settled that. Yeah, no, I, I don't. I, I don't agree with. If, if, if you have a George, you got a one-day liquor license at your at your at your farm. Just you have a party. You you know have a concert. I I can walk onto your farm, and sell sell beer at your farm. Sure, more the than the distinction better. is as private property. We're talking about this public is not property. It's, that's, it's, that's it's property a, owned yeah. by by the state by by the town of Mount Airy. That's a distinction. That's public property. It's public. That when and they close it down, that when they make it to, they, you they take responsibility of that area. They have to get permission from State Highway Administration. And yeah, she, they did. And regardless, you have nothing in writing saying that. They already said no about the DFW. I know, but uh, I, I just don't. He looks out for all the liquor licenses. Yes, that's my job. Right. Your job is to enforce the law. I, I'm trying to, and I think the law is. That area is considered private property. When you shut it down, when, it's, when the town can shut it down, the town manages that, I think it's private property. It was private well, then property. law enforcement has no right to go into private property and do anything. Right. It's public property. Cops, well, can, cops can walk on that street, even though there's a liquor license involved, and do stuff. I can walk in your, your street as a police officer. I can walk in your property and do something. No, if I, no. If, no you can't. No, you can't. Depends on the, depends on the situation. If there's a reasonable suspicion there's something, a crime going, I can walk oh. in your property to, to investigate. That's well. Yes, that's I can. Different. So there is there is ways I can do it. No, yeah. Well, first of all, that's been exigent circumstances for you to come to my property. No, it does not be exigent to me. To, I can go. I can walk on your property, not going door, and there's nothing you can you cannot stop me from doing it. I can tell you to leave. Okay. And you have to leave. Yeah, but I'm saying, but I can walk on your property. Oh, so can the postman. Yeah. I'd be glad to hear Eight. a motion for adjournment. <laughs> Eight. Eight. We could have solved this yesterday at lunch. We had the judge right there. 